Okay, yes, man. So we'll be doing that now. Yeah. Elm, so you ready? Thank you. <coughs> Good evening, and welcome to the Village of Mimarinic Board of Trustees work session for uh, August 8th. 2022, 8-8-2022. Uh, I need a motion to open this work session. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, first item on the agenda, is the planning board comments on the tree. Oh, wait, adoption of the agenda. I move that we adopt the agenda. Second. Will you please call the roll? Absolutely. Trustees Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Okay. Yes. Before? Yes. Mayor Murphy? No. Uh, okay. First item on the agenda planning board comments on the tree law. I was looking at this before. Uh, is the cleanest copy Very well. Exhibit A? No. The cleanest copy is on top. That's exhibit A. Um, in my, in I think my the cleanest here. copy is H4 on the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> It's the bottom. The All right, so that, 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 is a, that is what my thing is called on exhibit A. I have eight foot tail. Okay. Okay. Fine. Bob, uh, you've been involved in this, right? <laughs> Do you want to talk us through some of the changes or improvements or uh, deletions? Sure, just give me a second. I didn't, for whatever reason, I didn't print it. So. You want? I have it. No, I don't pull it up. I just, I just didn't have it. Okay. So, uh, so this is basically. Uh, do we have comments? Uh, that makes sense. No. No. This is basically some uh, cleanup comments on things that the planning board uh, wanted to see in the tree law that weren't in the 22 or so drafts we did of the last version. Uh, this is version three of the new version. Anyway, uh, the first section, uh, deals is, is an amendment to the wetlands law which clarifies that when you apply for a wetlands permit, you have to include a tree preservation plan in your submission if whatever you're asking for involves taking down trees. That was one of the clarifications we made with the tree committee uh, over this last round, which was you don't have to uh, submit a tree preservation plan if, you're not, if whatever you're doing doesn't involve taking down any trees. Uh, so that's, that's the first amendment. Section two deals with um, one of the issues was what do you have to do with regard to a tree that came down on its own went through a storm or just it died and fell or whatever. And the original proposal was that you had to effectively go back and apply for a tree permit and a tree removal permit to take out the tree that had removed itself. So what the tree committee ultimately came up with after some back and forth was that you just have to submit proof that it came down on its own and, and to the village manager in the form of photographs. So that's what uh, that's what this does. Yeah, I, I just have a question about that. Um, there's a tree outside uh, my co-op that fell. You know, a couple years after I moved in, it's about five years ago, before I was mayor. And uh, I would say a third of the tree fell down. Like literally, it was a huge old uh, tree and a third of it fell down. And obviously they cleaned up the third that fell down and removed it. This is before the tree law. But would they then have to go to get a permit? And this was a village tree, but just to say this was somebody's tree. Would they then have to go to get a permit to remove the two thirds of the tree that didn't fall? Yes. Okay. Because they still, 
under the, the concepts of the tree law, there would still be a requirement to establish there's a reason to take down that tree. Okay. The fact that a branch came down doesn't mean you take down the whole tree. So, this was more than a branch. Was... Uh, let's see. The, um, the section four of the laws, uh, section three simply adds to uh, you don't need a permit to remove a dangerous tree, and, and you must remove a dangerous tree or a dangerous tree limb. The section four is what I was talking about before. Um, it talks about it addresses what happens when a tree comes down on its own. And then uh, there are a couple changes to the next section to conform to things we already talked about, like how, how it relates to the wetlands law. Section uh, the G, it's 318G3. Three. Three now addresses the tree bank and makes it clear that it's up to the planning board to determine what is required, what the deposit is. Uh, that has to be made to the tree law when you're going to cut down trees and can't replace them. Get a tree bank. A tree bank. When you uh, cut down trees and you can't replace them. And then the last couple of sections deal with site plans and subdivision and clarify that you need to put a, a tree preservation plan as part of it. Thank you. I have two, just two, one, two questions. One from one from the two, one from the, the from the tree committee. Oh, sorry. I have two questions, and they're both from the tree committee. One is uh, section um, three eighteen eight G three. So it's the tree bank. Yes. What happens if what? How does how does the planning board compel? Is that in a different part of the code? I think there, the tree committee wanted yeah, to make yeah. sure that they have to, that it has to be complied with. Yeah, it becomes part of the site plan resolution. Okay. Of course, it becomes part of the site plan okay. resolution. That's what, that's, what I, that's what I said, but I wanted to check with you. And then um, what happens if it says that they have to, a permit has to be issued, a removal permit has to be issued within or not within 21 days. What happens if it's not issued in 21 days? The applicant to go to court, go to court and seek a writ of mandamus mm -hmm. to compel the village manager to uh, issue the, to act on the permit. But that seems extreme. Like if the, if, if if it just lingers, what what's the remedy? They have to go to court. That's the remedy for any village board or entity or official. Any public official that doesn't do a duty required by law. There's no other. Uh, First, you write a few letters. Yeah, and then, then you call the mayor. But the, uh, the legal remedy is, is uh, okay. uh, proceeding in the nature of mandate. So, they, so, the so there's nothing they can put in the code, basically. That was the question. Okay. Well, I mean, there's nothing that's normally put in the code so, to address, put in the code to address that situation. Okay. The assumption is that public officials do their duty. I think that got. Uh, in the 21 versions, I think that was discussed in one of those meetings in the regatta and everybody's forgotten that. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, okay. I have a couple of questions for me. Go ahead, Dan. Um, and I'm a little, a little confused. Even if a tree has fallen by its own, you know, by nature, a permit is required or is not required because no. of so a, permit, a permit is not required. What's required is the submission of proof that it fell on its own. You're not just taking it down and pretending that it fell on its own. I, I understand the latter part. The question is the submission of proof has to be with an application for a permit? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Dave. Say again? I can't hear you. Does a submit, submission to the village be in the form of a permit request or a, or just here here's an email with some pictures
it is the discussion was whether it should be an application for a permit or the submission of proof. The result of the committee's deliberations, and my suggestion, was that it's a little strange to apply for a permit to take down a tree that has already fallen. And couldn't agree with you more. I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, so what was really being requested was proof that it had fallen, and so that's all that's required by this version of the code. This version of the treaty. Okay. The problem I have is I'm not sure that that's what the, is in what is on page the first page because it says you have to apply for a permit, you know, and then it says for D, which is a new language, you know, it doesn't say uh, you don't have to supply a permit. You just it says this is what you have to include. I'm not. I'm not far where you are. Yeah. In section one. One, an application for a permit shall blah blah blah, and then you go to D. So, I'm not sure that you were doing what we. I think. I'm sorry, D. We must be looking at the wrong place because D one D involves. This is the, the amendment to the wetlands law that involves concerns where. When you need to, I'm, I'm looking at this, the version dated 2022 804. Okay. Section one of the proposed law? Section one. Yeah. It says an application for permit shall be filed right. by that's, the applicant, blah, 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 blah. This blah. is the wetlands. The wetlands is born. This is not the tree law itself. I'm sorry. Then, I, then, I, then, I've missed, then I misread it. I apologize. But I did, but it does raise an interesting question, and in that would probably carry through the tree laws as well, which is on <clears throat> section eight, three eighteen eight, removal of trees by private. The per, all the permitting language refers to the building inspector, except for number three, where it's the village manager. And if it if the determinations are are being made, it should all be made by the same person. So it should be to the building inspector is what I'm suggesting. I think that's a function of the earlier discussion about the fact that the discretion whether or not whether a tree is damaged or diseased yeah. should be made by the village manager's office, not by the building inspector. But you can change that if you want. You can make it whatever you want. Well, no, I, I understand. I just, it seems to me they're in the field doing all the work. They're in the processing. There's an issue. It's a violation. They're the ones who are going to be handling it. Okay. So it just seems, it, it seemed, uh, I'm, I'm not, you know, it just seemed to be a more coherent approach. You know, to the language because everything on the permit everywhere else refers to the building inspector. Yeah, I think the logic was that for the most part, these things, the permit applications go with other, other applications, subdivisions, site like, plans, all those things get handled from the building department. Mm -hmm. But that this part, because there was a lengthy discussion, as I recall, about the competence to make these decisions being particularly with the building manager right now. That's your best with him, but that's up to the board. There's, there's no, there's no need for, there's no need, legal need for assistance. I, just, I understand. I just, for me, it just seems to be better. And then I have the other issue is an action on a tree per, on permit application has to be done within 21 days. I can't hear you. I'm sorry. An a decision on an application for a tree permit has to be done within 21 days, that's up it. or down. But doesn't say what happens if nothing is done. Well, Nora raised that question a minute ago. And my response was that the normal codes don't generally provide some penalty. There's no, what are you going to do? You know, the village manager is terminated if he doesn't decide within 21 days. What are you going to do? The normal remedy for a public official not doing his or her duty is to bring it out of the 70 interest. 
but I don't think that's a reasonable approach for something like a, a tree permit. Uh, <clears throat> if the you know you if the, if the village is, village has a problem, granted. say again. You can say it's not acting on within twenty one days. It's granted. And, and that's what I'm suggesting that we do. That I mean, these are we're not trying to make it onerous for people. Okay, if the village with its you know very significant staff that is very competent can't make that decision, you know, within 21 days, then we should be, you know, approved, period. You know, and, and I and I think we want to be fair to our residents and just not keep them hanging. We the village, you know, has no problem of saying there's a violation, you know, or we're not going to do this, we're not issuing this permit, you know, it's being denied, or until you submit something, blah, 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 you know, it is denied. Yeah, I mean, there are ways of handling it, but I think people are entitled, you know, in you know, in the time period that we're setting to bring it to finality. So if the village can act, then it should be just deemed to be approved, period. If that's what the board wants to do. You can, that's easy to put in. So this is a work session. How do we, uh, how do, we do that if we want to do it? Well, let's just discuss it before okay. yeah. we, you know, because. I mean, there, there are, there might be times when we have a village manager that's sick or somebody to build stuff that's right. sick, and we can't get to it in 21 days. And say somebody wants to take down 10 trees, yeah, they just chop down the 10 trees without any oversight. I, I don't think it's owner. I, I think that hasn't been the case. I think people have gotten their permits. Actually, it's not been the case. You know, you know, people have mostly gotten their term permits in a timely fashion, and. You know, I, I think this is one of those cases where we're trying to fix a problem that doesn't exist. Uh, and I, I don't support, you know, giving this responsibility to the building inspector. He has enough to do. And we have a, a, a village manager who's very competent in the preservation of trees and very trained in the preservation of trees. And should that change in the future, then we could change the law. I think the um, the tree committee's reasoning for having um, the building, the, the village manager or his or her designee was that we happen to have a village manager who's an arborist, we might yeah. not. The town of Mamaronic actually has an arborist who does it. It wasn't something that any building inspector felt comfortable doing. So it seemed like we need, it, it was a provision to make sure that there was an arborist, a qualified arborist making those decisions. So it may not seem I mean, I guess we could require the building inspector become an arborist, but you know. And we, I not. think the tree committee has a very good relationship and is in constant contact with the village manager. I, with the 21 days, I think the tree committee would like like a resolution, like if it doesn't happen, they picked 21 days because they wanted, I mean, after a lot of conversation, they didn't want it to take too long. They didn't want it to be onerous. But, you know, if there is an emergency, 21 days might, you know, maybe if we're going to have a, default provision, then it would have to be 28 days. But um, my, my point is that you have a village manager and an assistant village manager and building inspectors, all of which can make a determination. Mm -hmm. Well, we had but, one situation, I will say there was one situation where somebody asked in December and it slipped through the cracks. And she didn't send a reminder and she just sent a reminder last week. It just had, you know, just sent a reminder last week, just like she had wanted a tree looked at. So that would have been, but she didn't make an application. She asked right. that the village come and look at the tree. Yes. And I Which think it different. was a street tree. Yeah. So she hadn't actually filed an application. Seeing if this becomes she can't file an application for a street tree. I think she wanted to make sure it was a street right. tree. No, no, yeah, but I'm saying got, yeah. you can't you can't no. ask, you can't file an application to remove the street tree because you don't own the street tree. Right. It's interesting when I. It, it seems to me that that uh, that's not a, it's it's not an essential part of the uh, uh, of the law that we should pass the law, and if it becomes a problem in the future, we can address it. Yeah, if I may, uh, I talked to Beverly about this. Talked to who? Beverly, the chair of the, and she said, "What happens?" And she said, "It's approved." And I said, "I don't think the law says that." Just well, it's the intent of the law. In all due respect to Beverly, who I like a lot, Beverly doesn't write the law. We write the law. We're uh, talking about it right here tonight. I understand that. And that's why I'm trying to say, I think in order not to be onerous to residents who are complying, um, you know, uh, or if they're trying to play games, either way, 
it should be brought, you know, to a decision. You know, 21 days is fine. I don't have a problem with the days. I just, right now, you've told us that the way the law is written today, Bob, you've told us that there is no requirement to issue a permit. Sorry, I, he just said, I believe erroneously, that you just said that there's no requirement to issue a permit after 21 days. Well, there, there's a requirement. The law says it has to be, the, the law says it has to be acted upon within 21 days. The question is, what's the remedy? I understand. And it's, it, it, if it does, the village doesn't act, it is an unreasonable uh, assumption or a burden to put on a resident to bring an Article 78 to issue the permit. I, I, you know, I don't think that's the intent of anybody here, and I think that one way or another we should, you know, you know, clarify that. But I think that's, I think, going back to those twenty-one versions, that was, it's the same. If you, if a building permit isn't issued within a timely frame, it's the same remedy. So yeah, you just need to be concerned about the potential response when something slips through the cracks and a mm -hmm. permit is granted by default. Right. You could get you know, 10 trees chopped down without that were healthy. You that's the judgment you have to make on that. And and which is the greater rule? And I think if we, if we were going to have a default provision in the code, we'd have to extend it to 28 days. And and you'd have to look at other areas where you have a you know to to mm -hmm. where a default would be appropriate. Because we don't have other defaults. We don't and there's probably a real good reason for that. Any other comments? Victor, you're right. Uh, no questions. You guys are okay for moving us to a public hearing? Or schedule, putting, putting a public hearing scheduling on the agenda for the next regular meeting. Yep. Yeah, I think the. Um... The only do Beverly had raised one issue with for, with Bob. Um, do we leave it twenty one business days or three calendar weeks? So twenty one business days is technically different from three calendar weeks. Typically, we use twenty one. Mm -hmm. You're talking about calendar weeks. Okay, fine. You, you can do whatever you want. Fine. No, I just, I'm just. I don't want it. So. I want to be done tonight. I mean, I want to. I want to. Yeah. I want to make sure that we don't go back for any more revisions yeah, after tonight. Pull the trigger rooms. So I'm not hearing uh, any uh, uh, negatives about putting it on the schedule of public hearing at the next board of trustees. I think we put it on for two August. weeks or for, well, uh, or. The first, the first, the last meeting in, in no, the, the last meeting in this month's an AP. Yeah, so we so, do it first meeting in September. First meeting in September. For the second week in September. Unless, Correct. do we need to recirculate this to all the other boards again? Uh, it's not a zoning. No. There is a member to the wetlands, so off the top of my head, I'm not 100% sure that uh, you don't need to circulate a change in the wetlands. So, that's what we're not so let's, let's. So, why don't you circulate it? Yeah, why, don't we, why don't we circulate it tomorrow? Can we circulate morning? this draft? Okay. Can we circulate it? Um, we start to have a certain amount of notice time once the board sets a public hearing, irrespective of whether you circulate it today. I think you just circulate it. Okay. We're circulating it for comment. That'll satisfy the board. Yeah. Plus, if we get a comment, better sooner than later. <laughs> and actually, I, I think that the law says may circulate. It doesn't say shall. I think you also always already circulated this anyway, but not the final draft. <laughs> Mm, I don't know. I don't, I don't think they've had it since since they since the September since we approved it last year. Okay. All right. Can you circulate it some more? Thank you. And we'll put it on the agenda. That that gives them until really the, the last of September to comment. They want to comment. So it's on for October. No, it it'll be. We'll schedule the public hearing at the first meeting of September. For the, and for we'll the schedule second meeting. The second meeting of September. So you, and, and you want no changes to the form, this way. Thanks. Thank you. And you made the you, and you made their suggestions that more clear. So thank you. 
Oh, pardon me. Mm -hmm. you know, I was uh, happy with all the changes they made. Yeah, it, yeah. it read nicer. I had a nice long conversation with Deborah about it. There's a small one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you guys are right over there? Try it. Okay. We're, we're, this is turning into a civil service stroke. How many test, employees test. does it? <laughs> test, test, test. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Test, yeah, test, test. test. What, what are you trying to do? The mic broke. No, is it, is it working? Is it... We're, we're working on technical. Uh, test, issues. test, test. Okay. Um, but then talk through it like you're talking to the back of the room. The back of the house, like they say in Broadway. Okay. Uh, the next up is an issue I put on escrow for appeals for building inspector determinations. We've had a couple of these, and quite frankly, they run the taxpayer a lot of money. And it, it's, I don't think it's fair to the people uh, who then their property is being appealed and they have to go out and spend uh, their own personal money. And uh, the person who is asking the building department for determination uh, basically gets to do it on the taxpayer's dime. And uh, I, I just don't think that that's a fair situation. And uh, I, I think we should start uh, charging an escrow uh, that reflects the cost of the work to the taxpayer. Uh, I don't see any reason why not to. So I, I throw that out there because I think that that is a, a fair way of doing it. So the, this, this, this is um, uh, the building inspector issues a, a permit and somebody decides to challenge it. Somebody decides to challenge it, yes. All right. I certainly, uh, it would seem if they, you had contiguous property owners, you, could, you might want to uh, yeah. let them do it, but I don't think you want to, uh, no? No, I, I don't think, you, I mean, I think if, if, you, if you want to take a, an appeal, you should be willing to cover the cost. I don't think you should ask the taxpayers to cover the cost. This is, applies to more than just a third party. It applies, if you do that, you would be applying it to somebody who uh, is denied a decision or a decision that by the building department that they don't feel is correct on their property. Uh, and we've had cases where that has happened. <laughs> that, that already happens, and it's called uh, asking for a variance. And they do have to put up as close as that. If they wish to go for a variance, they can. They can also appeal the decision without going for a variance. And in some cases, you don't go to a variance. Right. So it's an end around run to get it for free. No, it's not an end around run to get it for free. It is, I believe it is. To get a determination that uh, if somebody feels aggrieved, that they can, you know, that the, that the, building department has not acted correctly. Mm -hmm. And there are cases where that has happened and many cases where it has not happened, you know, but it, it does happen. Uh, and the most, the most okay. uh, so why should the taxpayers have to pay for that? Because the, the village it makes a decision and it is being appealed because it is felt not to be right. And if it is correct, then you're, it, the, what, you make, what you do is make it so onerous uh, to somebody uh, that um, not, to, not to challenge something that they feel is wrong. Okay, so when, when, when it was then determined that the building inspector was right, it's still in the taxpayers. And, and if it's wrong, the same thing. Yeah, so this, yeah. This, 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 is, this is a taxpayer expense that you think is a good use of taxpayers' money. To allow somebody to basically litigate against the village on the village's dime. That seems like a good use of taxpayers' money. Because it seems to me, you know, if, if you really feel aggrieved, I mean, if I feel aggrieved by a decision uh, that you know, a, a community makes, I have a right to go to court. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't, you know, as, a, as an individual citizen, uh, expect the taxpayers to pay for that. What are you going to say about it? So I just want to clarify something. An appeal by an applicant to the Zoning Board of Appeals is a land use application within the meaning of the fees law. So if the building inspector turns you down and you appeal, 
you have to pay. If the pay the escrows, if the village, if the building inspector grants a permit, you don't have to, the challenger does not have to pay escrows. That, but that's not our code. That's really what the law is. Is no, that that's correct? Our code. That's the I know code. that's what our code is, but I also this was this was a big topic of conversation in 2016. And it was, you know, it was determined that we didn't have the village didn't have before any of us were on the board. Um, well, actually, I think Victor was on the board. Um, the, um, that the village didn't have the authority to challenge to require people who are asking for an interpretation of building the determination of the building inspector before the zoning board. So I think I mean I'm. Why would that be? Well, there's case law about it. So I mean, I I, I mean, I'd like to have I'd like to have more information before we do this. So there's okay. case law about I, it. I recall it wasn't in 2016 because I don't think I was going to turn in 2016. I think it came around again too. It was in 2017 when I was going to turn. Mm -hmm. And this was discussed, and you're right. When it was discussed, there was a feeling that the board did not want to make someone challenging a building permit uh, pay the escrow. That, that the person, the appellant, the person who wanted to develop the property should, mm -hmm. but the person who challenged shouldn't. I don't recall any discussion about the village not being lawfully able to do that. And I'm not familiar with any law that says you can't, but it doesn't mean it's not possible. I've never researched the subject. I, I found this memo from 2016, a letter to, the, I mean, just a uh, Barry and Dave, two people from the zoning board then, Barry Wepper and Dave Newfield. And I remember they came and talked about it. But then also there had been a previous situation a long time ago where an applicant had been charged a lot of money and it was determined that that wasn't allowable. So I think before we do this, we should make sure we're- Okay, I, I'm, um, I'm all for making sure that the law is- when you say an applicant, do you mean an applicant for the building permit or an appellate? No, well, somebody was challenging was challenging a building permit, challenging the, the determination of a building inspector. And I think, and I'm not like I, I, I think the idea is you could, you know, one could, and I'm not saying this would happen in the village of Mamaronic, but on a more global level, one could, you know, get a determination from a building inspector that really wasn't code compliant. And it benefits that individual applicant, but it's it's a nightmare for the neighbors, and the neighbors then have to spend a lot of money challenging that. So I think it's I think that's that's sort of the inherent unfairness in it that an applicant gets a benefit that could adversely impact neighbors. So I think I mean, I'll, I'll I'll make a copy of this and send it to you and send it to everybody. I just found it at the last minute today. Is there any requirement that uh, appellates have a standing? I mean, uh, um, or they can and anybody appeal anything? Yes, there is a requirement that you you suffer some injury. That's actually an issue before the zoning board appeals right now. Uh, the case, I think, a case on Oriental Boulevard. Oh, that okay. I'm, I'm I'm familiar with that one. Yes, okay. So that so those those um, those uh, appellants who do not live anywhere near the uh, uh, the, the property question. They're getting they're 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 allowed to challenge that without paying a fee. That's correct. Well, that okay. So we so we're encouraging uh, zoning vigilantes then, right? That's a legal conclusion. In theory, if that's the case, people could just tie up the zoning board for months by appealing every decision that the building inspector makes. Well, the, the legal answer is they wouldn't have to pay a fee. That's the under the current code. Yeah. Well, I'm just talking about impracticality. All right. So if they're going to do that, they should at least, uh, you put know, some skin. It, they put some skin in the game. <laughs> Write a check or something. All right. Great. All right. Makes sense. Okay. So, so Bob, could, I would appreciate that. So we'll hold that for the next meeting, which will be the end of the beginning of September. Nine, seven, eight, nine. I don't know what it is. Uh, <coughs> well, it can't be, right? So what's the oh, September 12th. September 12th, yeah. Am I going to be? Yeah, I'm going to be. Okay. Uh, policy for the use of blind copy. 
Uh, this is uh, this is for me. Uh, I submitted it a, a while back. Uh, it's, it's just purely um, my observation that um, we should have some, you know, some rules about blind copying people on internal uh, uh, internal communications because when we allow um, BCCs uh, indiscriminately, we're allowing third parties to to eavesdrop on communications uh, inside the village. And uh, part of this also is the, the use of these uh, gigantic lists that we have. We should know what those lists are and, and somebody should be in, in charge of them. So I, I, I wrote this up. I am uh, more than happy to, uh, to discuss it with my, um, my fellow uh, trustees. And I think it's something we should, uh, we should address. I mean, it's not, uh, it's not brain surgery, but uh, I think we should, uh, we should make it clear that you can't BCC um, outsiders on village business, except in very limited circumstances. And just for the audience, BCC means blind copy means that, you know, I'm sending Dan uh, uh, an email and I decide to, uh, to blind copy uh, Laura over there because I want Laura to, 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 to see how Dan reacts or whatever. It's just not, it's just not a good way to, uh, uh, to, to perceive the business. Concern the copying or, or blind copying? Hmm? Oh, you can copy anybody, but 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 blind copying is is, is the the anonymity of it makes it uh, I think makes it all onerous. Um, you know, there are there are companies that have rules on this. I think we should uh, we should too. Just brought it up, and I'd I'd love to hear what everybody thinks about it. I understand the impetus behind it, and I think it's you know valid. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, my, my question to Bob is, Bob, oh, is, is this, will there be legal considerations to this? Well, we're talking about the- We're talking about employees. So our employees build staff. Yeah. Well, right? so also adds volunteer boards and commissions. If they're using the, if they're using the server, our server. Work to the village in one way or another. Yeah. And we're talking about their official communication, mm -hmm. right? We're not talking about their private communications because they shouldn't be using the village email system for that to begin with. So the answer is those communications are controlled by the village or and can be regulated by the village without regard to the First Amendment because it's government speech. I think it makes sense. I'd, I'd be interested. So but Dan, did you, did, would, would that complicate your life as a as a manager? Well, the the bigger issue is I don't think we have the technological capability to turn off the BC. Oh no, we don't. Yeah, you just tell so, people they can't do it. If they do it, they're in violation of the, of the rules. Right. Yeah. Policy. Yeah. Policy. Uh, I it it seems I don't, I mean personally I think there's. A strong element of common sense here and if you're a professional who uses email you should understand when a bcc is appropriate um and i i don't think we should be removing people from boards and commissions because they have inappropriately line copied somebody well, it would depend on circumstances well, but that i just feel like that's a that's a whole level of judginess that we're going to tie well, why, ourselves why up in knots with. Why don't we make it a, a recommendation? Yeah, I'm like, just make it a recommendation. I mean, we don't, I mean, in terms of social media, we have a village push out policy because we don't want comments because those become public records, right? They become a record that we have to keep track of. Technically, if you send an email to someone and you blind copy other people, that's also a public record, you know, under FOIL. I mean, if you're requesting an email, if you get somebody FOIL requests something, they should know who got blind copied. Well, that's not the good, the point, the point is I, I'm, I'm telling people, if you're using our server, don't blind copy people. I mean, this is unless, unless you've got specific, uh, uh, under very limited circumstances, it's not appropriate. If you do, it's a violation of our policy. And you know that that may or may not be something that required that has uh, consequences, but it is. So when when looking at somebody's uh, you know 
record or jacket or whatever. Yeah, they violated policy, they violated this, that, the other thing. Right? Right. This is, you know, the result of a spectacularly bad exercise of bad judgment on the part of one person. So, um, uh, I'm not. I'm not sure that this isn't a problem, a solution in, in look of a problem. But, and I don't. I, I don't think we can discipline people for doing this. I don't see how that would be practical. I don't know how you find out that people want coffee unless. Oh, somebody says I just got this email. Yeah, I, I got. Why? Why am I getting this email? Um. Uh, what is it? Um. Uh, you know. Or. How did this person find out about this? Well, they were blind copied, uh, uh, you know, on a, on a communication. You know, it, 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 there's a lot of lot of nefarious things that can have, that, that that BCC can uh, can uh, um, can uh, lubricate. You know, I mean, that's what I, I'm, I'm not, that's not the right word. <laughs> that is not the right word, though. Um, uh, is this a rampant problem that we have? Mm -hmm. Is this a rampant problem that we have? Yeah, it is. I mean, I think I'm, I think I'm not aware of it. I'm, I'm aware of maybe inappropriate uses of CC, but I haven't been made aware of anything that you know in terms of BCCs. Okay. All right. I mean, uh, I, I I I think it's a good idea. Okay. I, I think we should. I think it's trim it down a little bit. Sure. Can we keep it on the agenda? And do you mind if I look at it and try and? No, I would. That, that's I welcome. I put. The, I wrote this down off the top of my head. I'm uh, after I did, my research. I did is I googled it, and uh, BCCs are a problem. Many corporations uh, forbid them. Blah 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 blah. You know, it's 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 all right there. It's not. Uh, this is not the uh, um, like I said, not rocket science. But it it makes sense that that uh, inside a government uh, uh, communications, we shouldn't. Be just allowing people just to to, uh, to listen in. I mean, and, and there's a million reasons why people would want to do that, but you just tell them no. You know, they're going to have to go outside the system and, and have a separate communication with that uh, with that third party if they want to do or that. Or copy the person directly. Or copy them directly. Yes, in the open. Yeah. Transparency. Okay. All right. Uh, let's keep it on the agenda. Okay. Uh, thank you for working on this. Oh, it's a good idea. It's as took a, dozens of minutes. <laughs> on the other side, we do have internet, internet usage policy. Yeah. Which is chapter 36A of the village code. Yeah. So I just make sure you have a copy of that. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> like it took dozens of minutes. Yeah. Uh, still that. Uh, uh, traffic safety commission recommendations. Uh, Okay, let's go to the person. There's, there's a bunch of them here. Uh, let's knock them off one at a time. He's on for tonight's meeting. Yeah, we didn't get to them last week because we had a All right. distraction. That's why we're here. We've got some time tonight. We can, okay. We're actually moving along pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, stop sign on North Barry Avenue in both directions of travel. Uh, North Barry Avenue, uh, Brook uh, is, a, is a T onto North Barry. Uh, so this would be a stop sign on both sides. Uh, right now there's a crosswalk there. And I know during school days, there is a, uh, a crossing guard there. Uh, okay. That's my, the, that's, the, my, that's my block. And I, um, I tend to stop on Barry. In both directions. I mean, I just do it because it's it's. Is that it's, yellow thing still out there? Yeah. Okay. No. It's, yeah, but yeah, it's still out there. No, yeah, good, 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 good. But there was, I know, and there was conversation about limiting parking there on the uh, north side. So that there's so the car isn't too close to the intersection. On the north so side of Barry. Yeah. So when you're coming, when you're trying to turn. Like if you were making a right onto Brook. Or, to, or actually from, if you're trying, yeah. it, it's not so much making the right onto Brook, it's making the left yeah. from Brook to Barry. That's the, that is the- The sight line you're talking about. Yeah, the sight line. Yeah, that, well, I think there, there are two things with that. First, I, I don't think that the traffic commission reached consensus on that. However, I was going to ask our building department to uh, take a look at the intersection 
to see because I think there may be some shrubs there which are creating a visual obstruction. It's, it's not. I, it's not the shrubs, and it's not just a regular car. It's when like a panel truck is parked there. That's really what the problem is. It's better. It's. It's just. It's just. If if we're back one space, it would be a lot easier, a lot less inching out. Because now the stop sign may help because what happens is people take a hard, fast right. So if they have to stop, this may solve the problem. Laura's like, like it's, so. Before we do this, um, this was done years ago. There was stop signs there and there was a court case on it and the court ruled that we had to take the stop signs down. Uh, I don't know the specifics of it. You know it was it, uh, it happened. It is years ago, but there is a legal case from a, you know where a decision was made that we could not have the stop signs there. How do we find that? It's it's not I, it's not the shrubs, and it's not just a regular. Sally is up there. That's me. Oh. No, but it was selling. The only thing I, I could think of is, I mean, there are warrants in the manual of uniform traffic control devices which guide when uh, signs should be installed, but I don't think there's a requirement that that's a hard and fast rule. I think a, a, a local legislative body has the authority to uh, erect a, uh, a traffic control device if they deem it uh, to be in the best interest. I, I understand it, but the village did it. The traffic commission at that time recommended it. The village board approved it. The stop signs went up and somebody, I don't remember who, uh, challenged it. And all of a sudden the court, after whatever the, their process was, had, subst had a subst substantive reason to uh, annul it. And the stop signs came down. Do you know when this was? My lifetime. <laughs> but it, you, you know, there, there should be a Lexus approach to be able to find it. No, that wouldn't well, be. That's certainly, that's certainly the general rule. But if there's a case, there's a case. The question is how to find it. If it was reported, I can find it. You know, on the usual legal sources. I, if it was reported, it's a trip to the county no, courthouse. All I know is it it then affected a lot of other proposals for stop signs on streets. So I mean, I, I, it had I to do with it. Should, it had to do take, take the, the action and see if somebody litigates against it. Nobody thought it would be litigated before. Okay. Then so, what, what, how hard is it to take down a sign? It's not a question of how hard it is to take down a sign. What's the it's question? It's a question of if there is a legal reason that you can't do it. You don't want to do something that you know that we have the suspicion that there might be a problem. So you research it before you do it. I'm all, I, I don't have a problem with the stop sign. And in fact, I was in favor of the stop sign back then, uh, but somebody, uh, it had to do with a through, a, a through street. Um, I don't know, it, all I know is it affected other proposals after that for years as to where stop signs could and could not be put up. Well, I don't know how hard it would be to find it in the village's archives, not knowing when it, the decision came down. Well, you were, you were on the board of trustees, Dan? No. No. Okay. Uh, grammar school? <laughs> no. It would probably take less time to take the stop sign down if somebody found it than to find yeah. the decision. Well, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. Like, is it hard? To, would we be able to find that decision somewhere? I don't know. Is well, anybody looking for it? We'd have to read minute after minute after minute yeah, after minute. Try, if we tried doing this, a global search for the words North Ferry and stop, we'd probably find a thousand different methods. I, I can look right now. If it's a reported case, I can find it. But, okay, why, why don't you look but, and we, we, let's put this on the agenda if you don't find anything. We can move. We spent enough time on this one stop sign. Okay. Uh, amending a time parking restriction in Carpenter Place. This is going from eight to four to seven to three thirty. Yeah. Uh, Monday through Friday on school days. Uh, the north side of Park, the north side of Carpenter Place, uh, would then be no parking. This is changing a half hour. From what it is now. 
Uh, going from 7.30 to 3.30. That's uh, near uh, uh, that MHS, yeah. Yes. And it's uh, to um, accommodate uh, or to discourage some uh, some off, some off parking that, uh, that's going on with the, involving the students. Yeah, I, I think that, that it, it's more about, I thought it was like about walking to school, right? Yeah, I, I think part of it is just they wanted to uh, make it easier for the children walking to school, walking right. a carpenter, and this change more closely aligns the restriction with the uh, hours. the hours that the schools and oh. when, when children are walking to and from. And I, I just want to disclose that uh, there are people who need it and need to meet it live on the south side of Colbert Place, but I don't think it's, I don't think it uh, is a conflict. No, it will help more people than just yeah. that little family. All right. Is it okay with that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Expanding one way street on Ralph Avenue extension. I think this has to do with the church, right? Yeah, actually, the, the next two items really go along with one another. Uh, the police department made several recommendations to facilitate and uh, help uh, enhance pedestrian and traffic safety uh, around the church for the French American School and also the Maranek Avenue School. Uh, they met. Hold on, I'm, I'm getting information that people can't hear you. So that doesn't work sometimes. I boosted it up as much as I could, but I'm getting it. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I apologize. Uh, Let's speak to the back of the room. You know what no. I mean? That was loud. Is working? For a split second. Okay. <laughs> uh, so uh, really, the the, uh, the Montenegro Goodwine Avenue and uh, Ralph Avenue items go uh, hand in hand with one another. The Nomarina Police Department made several recommendations. Uh, for enhancing pedestrian traffic safety. They met with our traffic engineer, Mr. Carmody from AKRF. Uh, based on that field meeting, uh, they agreed on several recommendations. Uh, those recommendations were presented to the traffic commission. Uh, I don't believe the last year, but maybe the meeting before that. Uh, and then uh, we're going uh, to the board and uh, you know, the reason we're asking for the school related items to be passed is so that so the proper signs can be put on the school. school year. Gotcha. Everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. How's it work? The French American School. So, the, the, uh, what, what grades are down? In uh, Washingtonville, what grades were on Holy Trinity? Do we know? Uh, Laura, you know? It's um, middle school <coughs> at where in Washingtonville High School is. At, okay. And special class. Middle school in Washingtonville High School in Holy Trinity. Thank mm -hmm. you. So there's two more that I don't that aren't in the packet. Uh, they're not on the, we're not asking for those to be on the regular meeting tonight because uh, those are not, these are not school related items. So, uh, yeah, but they were, in, but they were supposed to be on our pack. They were, they're on the agenda, but they're not in the packet. Uh, which, which items D, non school items, no parking restriction on South Barry, no parking restriction on Old White Plains Road and Madison Street. Okay, well, let's do them this way. They're, they're in the work session packet. What? They're in the work session packet. Yeah, they're in the word section. Okay. I don't know. I I just I, yeah. I just downloaded it. Okay. So that was my senior good one. Okay, you, there's establishing a no parking restriction in South Barry Avenue. Uh, this was a request from a resident who lives on. Guyan Drive. Uh, right. I think he, he spoke with the neighbors. They're in favor of it. Mm -hmm. uh, he uh, came and spoke uh, virtually at the last traffic commission meeting. Uh, I think he was uh, just uh, asking the, the commission to move forward without it. I think the commission has made the recommendation uh, to establish the parking restriction. And we're going to the uh, board says okay. That's not on for tonight. It's no, not on for okay. it's on for it's on for September then. Oh, the end of yes, the, the well, first meeting in September. 
I mean, or or do assuming we, the board wants to. Yeah, I'm fine with doing it. Everybody else fine with doing it? Yeah. Blue, you're right. Yes. Okay. And then no restriction on old White Plains Road and Matt, no parking restrictions on old White Plains Road in Madison. Where's that? Uh, Madison from intersection of Old White Plains Road to a point 110 feet north thereof. And Old White Plains Road north from the intersection of Madison to a point 40 feet east thereof. So this is bracketing Pape's Park. Yeah. But was this, I, did, I, I remember something that uh, this has got some rec commission. Rec commission weighed in on this. Um, there are there's there's a a little bit of a concern about it about for, you know why we're, why we're doing it. Um, uh, I think the um, the uh, some of the verbiage surrounding it may have uh, got people. Uh, oh, I can't hear you. Use uh, the mic. Any, oh yes. In any event, uh, yeah, that 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 was that that came up. I think that this is uh, something that other people might want to weigh in on. Uh, okay. Well, thank you. Then it'll be in a month, and they can weigh in on it. Okay. Yeah. It might be the first time anybody had told Lou, Lou, Lou Young they couldn't hear him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. This uh, this has got some sensitivity to it um, because of the uh, Washingtonville community, and uh, um, I'm uh, inclined to listen to uh, to all uh, all input on it. Okay. And uh, and and in fact, I. I I think it might be wise to put it off till December. Well, I think the rec commission recommended to go to the traffic commission. The traffic commission recommended it. You were in support of it and I was, I was, the police yeah. are in support of it. And I think it's the only, it's the only park that has parking in front of it. So um, I'm not sure why we would put it off till December. Well, because there's some kind of community issues involved, but uh, if you want to, uh, if you want to push it through, well, I think that I mean, well, I'm not people, interested in pushing it through. I'm interested. In yeah, having, having people talk discussion. about it. Yeah, yeah I wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't postpone it. I would have the have the opportunity for people to discuss it. You know, I'd, I'd like to hear both sides, mm -hmm. and because uh, uh, everybody a month. And to be and to be frank with you, uh, 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 the presumption is that uh, in December there'll be. Uh, to uh, to trustees from that community on the board, and it'll be a little easier to deal with. That's it. Okay. Well, I, I hear what you say. All right. And uh, we'll see what happens in a month. Okay. We could always hold it off then okay. too and table it. Yeah. I mean, I know what I think about it, but uh, you know, it's not just me. It's true. <laughs> there you go. It's so, true. All right. Okay. So in a month. Let's test the joint water works intermissible agreement allowing, oh, I'm sorry, new business 2A. Uh, let's just the joint water works intermissible agreement allowing for Rye Lake filter project grant application. This is, you know, basically it is what I just said it is. Uh, all three communities have to approve the IMA so that the Westchester Joint Waterworks uh, can apply for a grant to alleviate uh, a large part of the cost of building that sewer, that sewer, I'm sorry, that uh, drinking water uh, filtration, right? filtration system at Rye Lake. Uh, because the Westchester Joint Waterworks can't do it without the approval of uh, all three communities. So does anybody have any questions or concerns? Bob, do you have any concerns about the actual language? Why? No. I'm oh, this is I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, was, I was working on the uh, finding the stop sign. The IMA agreement is for, with just a review for the grant. The 
I just pretty boilerplate where we put together. I have no problem. It basically says that it's a joint expense, which I don't think there's any dispute about, and that right. each uh, participant has to pay in accordance with the use, which is what the law says for joint war I don't see a particularly objectionable language. Okay. Any other questions, concerns about this issue? That would be great if we could offset the cost of it. Yeah, so let me see here. Times point two seven seven. Which saves the village tax may is eight point three million. If you get this rate payers, I'm sorry. It. Okay, uh, it's going to be on the agenda for tonight. Right. For tonight, yes. To be or not. Uh, Westchester Joint Waterworks infrastructure require placements. Oh, this, is, this is about uh, the work they're going to be doing uh, based on our paving. First one, uh, it's going to be $200,000. They originally had asked for uh, four hundred. dollars Our village of Mamarnock share. Wait up. The estimate local project water infrastructure replacement related to paving was $200,000. Oh, no. Revert Lane Transit Water Main to incur increase of labor material due to complications to part of the piping to traverse a wetlands area. Original estimate of the village share 110. Okay, this is for the first one is for a Brevort Lane, an increase in, in Brevort Lane. That is. Uh, a joint project because it's a Westchester Joint Waterworks supplying water to the city of Rye. And that cost is then passed on uh, to the Rye rate payers. But first we have to lay out the money. I, just as an aside, we haven't usually by this time of year, we've done the water rates. No. Yeah. 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 I think it's usually like September, October yeah. timeframe. It's definitely uh, the last couple of yeah. years. It was earlier. Okay, just it just. I, I, I can certainly follow for the water. I mean, because clearly the full. water rates <laughs> are going to go up, so I think we should. Yeah, I think they started looking at some of the stuff back in March when uh, we asked the board to set the sewer rate. Mm -hmm. So I think they, they may have some preliminary information. All right. Uh, I, I can reach out to the water. Thanks. Rate. Just. More, more good forward. news. Okay. Well, that will that'll be that report lane will be uh, transferred. The, the cost will be transferred to people in Rye. And how does that, Tom? Can you walk us through how that happens? Yeah, through the the increase in their rates accordingly. The capital project becomes part of what we charge them for water capital repairs. Just the same, the same basically is how we work here, right? You know, uh, you, you you recoup. You know, when Nora was just talking about the water rates, uh, you know, we ref we raise our water rates to reflect our capital <laughs> expenses too. So when we're charging the city of Rye, we raise their water rates to reflect the capital expenses that we have to incur on the system that we use to give them water. So why is it called the Village of Amerinic Share then? Because it's a joint project. Uh, because it's outside uh, of the uh, communities, the three communities, right? It's, it's in Rye. Mm -hmm. So it's a joint project. So we, re we get reimbursed part of it, but not all yes. of it. Okay. We get, no, we get reimbursed our part eventually. Mm -hmm. Our part, not just part of it, our part. Uh, Harrison gets their part, Town of Amerinic gets their part. Oh, because it's rye. Because it's rye. rye. Right, 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 right. So anything in rye is considered right. a joint project. Right. Because they're 
because they're not a, a member. They're not a member, right? Okay. It's and like we, we had infrastructure and in large money would be the same. If thing. they were the fourth member, it wouldn't be a joint project. If Correct. It's in okay. Correct. That makes sense. Okay. Okay. The next up is the uh, project on Claflin. They were, four, I forget how many feet. Uh, if you go down Claflin, they uh, are still uh, waiting to uh, 400 linear feet of transite water main on Claflin at an estimated cost of $450,000. And this is all us. Uh, I think that there are eight houses on Claflin right now that are on temporary water. So these are all, I mean, these are all emergencies. So if there was a possible way of doing these kinds of transite replacements on a better replacement schedule, we might save some money because the emergency work seems to be higher than work that's planned. I mean, we might not pick the, we, you know, we might pick the wrong, we might not estimate it properly. We might not pick the ones that are going to break the fastest, but it seems like instead of always doing this on an emergency basis, it would be good to do it on a proactive basis, at least. I, I understand it. Part of what's going on too is the Board of Health, and this is prior to me, uh, wanted them to uh, replace all the transite pipes uh, at one shot, and it would be prohibitive. So they did make a deal with the Board of Health that if, if a transite pipe broke, mm -hmm. right? They wouldn't repair the transite pipe. They would replace mm -hmm. from the beginning to the end of the transite pipe. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of the deal that was struck with the Department of Health. And it, it, it was struck that way so that there would, at the time, there wouldn't be like this prohibitive cost that would have, uh, so it's it, it part of a deal that they had with the Department of Health. Because I guess before that, they would just replace that slice of transite pipe, right? But now the Department of Health says, you know, from the beginning of that pipe to the end of that pipe. So, you know, we're, we're looking at here, if this was a, uh, if this was a cast iron pipe, uh, you know, it, 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 we might be replacing 10 feet of pipe. Mm -hmm. But because it's a transite pipe, we're replacing 400 feet. No, transite I, pipes, I, I, I understand. Benefit? Yeah. Transite <laughs> pipes are pipes that are made with asbestos. Yeah. I understand that. I, I, I'm just, I'm just saying that we have to repair the ones that break on an emergency basis, and we know that's more expensive. So, if there is a way of getting ahead and having a program to replace the others on a non-emergency basis, that might save money in the long well, run. How much transit piping do we have? A lot. A lot. Yeah. A lot. So we, 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 you know what? Let me ask that at the next meeting. I mean, how much do we have left? Where is it? And how much would it cost? So, I'll, I'll ask the question. Yeah, because, thanks. Because Nora, you could end up we, we could end up setting up a schedule yeah. and, and working on it. Yeah. And doing emergency. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I'm not saying we should do yeah. like a like you know like you know the, the schedule is not going to be written in stone, yeah. but it might say it it might save money because the emergency repairs are more expensive. It, okay. I, I just would be it'd be great if they could explore it. Okay, uh, I'll bring it up. Thank you. I think I have a meeting tomorrow. Uh, appointment. Okay, so that's all for Westchester Jump Works. To see appointment of village managers as representative to the Regatta Condominium Board of Managers. The village of Mamaroneck is the largest uh, shareholder, I guess, uh, at the Regatta Condominium Corporation, which is 123 Mamaroneck Avenue. Uh, so I believe the way the bylaws of the condominium are written the village always has a seat on the board. Yeah. Is that correct? We, we, we own the commercial unit. The commercial unit. Yeah, yeah, which is you know where physically you know the, co the conference room, my office, and, mm -hmm. uh, your office, mayor. That's that's all my, my office. Yeah. My yeah. closet. <laughs> your closet. <laughs> uh, that's the commercial unit of the regatta. The bylaws say that the uh, the owner of the uh, uh, retailer commercial unit can uh, elect or delegate. Someone to serve on the regatta board of managers. Okay, and Jerry has uh, we we had uh, our esteemed uh, clerk treasurer do it for years. And, and if you ever served on a co-op or condo board, yeah, you will know that, that, it, <laughs> that it's not uh, it's it's not a position anybody fights. To, people fight to get off it. Oh God, 
you know, it's, they asked me to get on mine and I said, I, no, I, I think being mayor is enough. Yeah. Uh, I don't need everybody hating me. Um, Do you enjoy those? I served. <laughs> I'm served. And uh, recently we've had uh, uh, Jason Pinto, the head of recreation, uh, doing it. And he did it very admirably, but uh, he has a lot on his plate. And, and I, think, I think at this point we need some high level eyes on this because they've got some issues. And um, and you know this is our investment, so we we need to. It's our home, you know. It, it, it. But at the same token, Jerry has been saying that you know he's you know is is overburdened on things, and needs to unburden himself on different things. Um, and I can understand that he has a lot on his plate. Um, I'm just not sure that that's the best use of his time, in, you know, as the village manager. I have no objections to him being on there. It just seems to me that, you know, there are numerous things that are going on and numerous major things that are going on in this village. And that's the village manager should be, that's where his time would be best spent. Well, the only reason he's asking us is because he can't appoint himself. Uh, he can appoint anybody else. No, I I, the bylaws actually say, they're a little weird. Elect, elect or delegate. Elect or delegate. They're, it's kind of a weird phrase. So. I, it's not even clear to me that the it's the village manager's job to make that decision. It's the it's this it's the fun it's the owner, so it's the entity that owns it. So I think it is actually up to the board of trustees. I mean, but I, I would argue the manager is, is the chief executive. Yeah. Um, it's it's uh, you know he's also issues that touch the uh, uh, yeah. deputy permits. I mean, it's not it isn't specific. There's yeah. somebody right. Somebody has to do it. And well, he doesn't think he can appoint himself. All right, and Nelson, he volunteered for it, so I guess he, he knows his time. We are, yeah, we'll be back. There'll be some of that work by, you know, we're, doing, we're, we're currently uh, canvassing for the village engineer position. Mm -hmm. We're back to going to a second round of interviews. So that would be the major item. Today. Maybe, maybe one of the trustees would like to uh, volunteer for that job. The engineer or the co op? No, no, the co op board. Kind of board. A lot of things are going to, uh, really, it could impact our administrative office space. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah they've got yeah. problems. They've got, they've got all sorts of yeah. issues. That so this is on for tonight. Yeah, everybody, all right for putting this off for tonight. Yeah, and I, and I'd rather hear it directly from Jerry than you know than uh, have it filtered through. Yeah, Alki okay. did an excellent job for many years. Yeah, he did, but he doesn't want to do it again, does he? It's enough grief at home for me. <laughs> they asked for you, you know that. They did ask me. <laughs> they begged for you. But <laughs> Ogie always leave them one more. Uh, Board of Ethics updates to the Ethics Code from the Ad Hoc Ethics Committee. Uh, we did an excellent job. It was Jocelyn Donut, uh, Ellen Houghton, John Hopstetter. Daniel E. Carson, who's chair, uh, Brian Kerr, and Michael Copey, who is now the head of uh, public safety for our neighbor in Rye. Yes. Uh, all right. Second interim report, August 3rd. This is the last. Oh, this is the this is the most. So they, they gave us this report a year ago. They made a presentation to the board mm -hmm. several months back. Yes. So, so. Okay. And they had made some. Um, then they redlined the code for recommendations, recommendations for, for for changing. This um, is the the uh, purple. Writing I'm seeing here. Purple, yeah, and then there's also some blue. Well, like a, 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 a there's like a pink and a purple. Well, I don't know. Oh, it may, hold on, hold it, on. Let me see. It may look gray, the purple. There anyway. There so there's 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 stuff that they eliminated. I'm I've gotten two colors. I mean, I'm just using on the computer. Um, but I think that what I think we need to um, really do like go through it line by line. I do too. And so I don't think, I think we should set up a separate work session to do it. You know, I think we, I think we should, because I don't, I mean, 
we're getting through a lot tonight, which is great. But I think it, it's one of those things. Yeah, it takes more time to know. Than we can do. And I think, and I, but I think it's something we really should be doing soon. And I don't know whether it should be a subgroup, like two people do it and make a presentation, or whether the five of us should sit down and do it. Somebody from the ad hoc committee going to um, yeah. have done well, they've it. already presented. Oh, they've already presented, got it. Given lengthy reports. Uh, yeah. It's been a lot yeah, of they time. They gave us this a year ago. It, it's, it's now in our lap right. to do something. Right. I mean, I'm sure they will answer questions, um, you know. And I'm sure they can be here when we go through it. But I, I think Nora's right. We need we should do it line by line. And maybe we could do this at the next, I don't know, find the date that we can all. I can't hear you then. Find a date where we all can do this, yeah. you know, uh, that and go through this. It's just like a meeting all to, unto itself. I think it is, and I think it's. I mean, they. Let's, I don't even know how in, many let's, hours. Let's pick a day in September. Whatever. What's what happened? What about um, at our next work session and devote that to it? Uh, it's not September. Our next no, work session is. Why don't we just pick a day? Because because there'll be other stuff that invariably we have to get to. Well, our next work session is the accounts payable. That's not a work session. Well, and, right. You know, I mean, it's, August twenty second. I, th I think you're looking at a special let's, uh, work session. Let's do a special work session in September. Accounts payable is supposed to be accounts payable. You know, when it, it, it's hard on staff when you then make it a work. Session. So how about if we circulate tomorrow, circulate some dates and yeah, try okay, to pick fair. and try to pick because it's silly just try. I think we shouldn't do it right now. Just try to pick a date. Yeah. That is me like and set two hours to do it and everybody have their comments. Yes, yeah, I think that's fine. Okay. I think it's fair. You're the capital plan. That's sort of the same thing. Yeah, the, the Jerry asked we need Jerry. Meeting all itself. Why don't I make a suggestion? Mm -hmm. Why don't we pick a date and do two hours for the ethics, two hours for the capital. We'll we'll, we'll have some dinner sent in, and we'll just we'll, we'll bang up both. Poor Ellen Halpman. <laughs> she was on both those. She's on both those committees. <laughs> If they don't have to be, so this is now our, in our lives. Right. So why don't we pick a date and everybody, you know, try and do it from like five to nine. Okay. Because it, it, it's too hard to get two dates. I think one date okay. is better. Okay. All right. I got a date with an angel. What that song? No, all my references are from 1940. Uh, purchase. Of Kabuta, purchase of Kabuta to replace John Deere Gator. Uh, so tell me about why the Kabuta is better than the Gator. Uh, I think the, there are several reasons. Uh, I think the Kubota, Kubota uh, can accommodate more attachments than the John Deere. Uh, the John Deere is meant more for light transport. You know, they, they, they were using it to carry people back and forth, very small supplies like sand and dirt in, in, the, in the pickup portion of, of the John Deere. I think the Kubota is more of a workhorse than the John Deere. And this they, was the, the, the green thing with like mm -hmm. six seats on it? Yeah. I think it, 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 it's, um, like I said, it's really more of a light transportation vehicle. I, I, I think not really an expert what you call it. That's how deer might describe. take. So it's like a big golf cart. Yeah, it's a little more substantial than a golf cart, but, but it looks like it looks like, like it, it looks like a golf cart. Yeah, it's a stretch golf cart. Yeah. And green, and green because it's John Deere green. Yes, I think the Kubota is just more. It's more of a workhorse. Offers more options for use okay. instead of being you know a limited piece of equipment that's just taking up space. All right, everybody on for uh, okay with this being off tonight. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Dan. Thank you.
And thank you to uh, Jeff Vaughn, uh, who was really on top of this stuff. Now, there's also a problem with ordering stuff and getting it on time, right? Yeah, I mean, that's the, the, the famous words these days, the supply chain issues. Mm -hmm. And it, it really impacts anything mm -hmm. motorized, anything yep. driven. Uh, well, right even now anything, a anything with a anything with a chip in it too. Yeah. Well, well, um, so right now it's a nine month lead time. So if we're able to kind of get order now, we should probably have it next for winter. the beginning of next season. If this waited a month, um, we, we might not get it till the middle of the season or even after next season. Just so suggests in his report that it was that it, that the gator won't make it through the winter. Yeah. We've been done a lot to try and uh, uh, you know, keep it running, but okay, let's, let's give them what they need. They're doing a great job down there, both the parks department and the rec department. I get nothing but uh, great feedback from people. And then, and every time I go down to the beach, it's pristine, it's well run. Uh, the, I, I walked by the day camp the other day, the kids were having a great time. We, we, we knew you were coming. I, I do think that when it goes through the gate, somebody calls down here, but that's okay. <laughs> Can you grab your Mark's face? That's okay. It's okay. Hey, listen, you know, I, I saw a t-shirt in Cape Cod and I wanted to get it, but my kids wouldn't let me get it. It said, Jesus is coming. And then in small letters, it said, everybody looked busy. They were right. Yeah, they were right. They're often right. Uh, ex executive session. Uh, appointments to boards and committees. It is anticipated that a motion will be offered to enter into executive session pursuant to 1051C of the New York State Public Officers Law to review the medical, financial, credit, and employment history of specific people related to the appointment to the Zoning Board of Appeals, Harbor Coastal Zone Management Committee, and the Tree Committee. Uh, okay, I'll make that motion. Second. Will you please call the roll? Sure. Trustees Young? Yes. Trustee Natchez? Yes. Trustee Lucas? Yes. Trustee Tafor? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Okay. Uh, you know, we forgot one thing. What did we forget? Um, referral from the Board of Ethics. We don't have one. Yeah, I, I think this may have been... I, I, I think there's a miscommunication about yeah. this, and I think okay. there was something for advice of counsel mm -hmm. about something having to do with referrals. I think, in looking through emails, it was referrals to the board of yeah. ethics. Okay, I, think that, that's, okay. I just yeah. want to yeah. clarify we that. The board of ethics and we have back. Okay, uh, LMC TV shut us down. We take a powder, folks. We're going to exec. Hey, Sally. Sally. Are you around, Sally? Hello, Sally.
I'm ready. We're All live right. and we're recording. We're live and we're recording. Good evening. Welcome to the August 8th, 2022 Village of Mamaroneck Board of Trustees meeting. Uh, the first thing we have to do is close the work session. I need a motion to close the work session. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, please join me for Pledge of Allegiance. Aye. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, I need a motion to open this meeting. Second. All in favor? Hi. Uh, there, are, there are emergency exits to my right and to my left. Uh, should there be an emergency? God knows there's enough emergency service workers here, so we hopefully we'll be fine. Uh, I need a motion quickly on the adoption of the agenda. I move to adopt the agenda as typed. Second. Only call roll. Trustees Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. To four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? No. Uh, swearing in of police officers. I'm going to join our police chief, uh, Sandra DeRuza, and uh, we are going to bring the new police officers up one by one. Uh, Sandra is going to read a little biography of that uh, person, and I'm going to do the swearing in. And after the swearing in, uh, you know, your family can come up with you. And if you want to take pictures each individually, that would be a good time to do it. So I give you our esteemed police chief. Good evening. The, our first officer is Jake Puchella. Police <laughs> officer Jake Puchella is 25 years old and proud to be one of the newest members of the MPD family. Officer Puchella was born and raised in the village attended Rhinex schools from kindergarten to 12th grade and played football, baseball, and threw a shot put for the school. He attended SUNY Oneonta, where he played rugby and earned a bachelor's degree in criminal justice. After graduating college, Officer Pichello worked as a private investigator for two years and was previously employed as a police officer for the city of Mount Vernon. Officer Pichello is very excited to bring his knowledge experience to his hometown, and he looks forward to positively interacting with the community each day. Uh, this is the old, uh, when I say state name, I, I, take my job, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I'll support the Constitution of the United States, that I'll support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the State of New York, the Constitution of the State of New York, and the rules and regulations of the Village of America, and the rules and regulations of the Village of America, and that I will faithfully discharge the office of police laws. I will faithfully discharge the office of police officer. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jose Fernandez. Police officer Jose Fernandez is 30 years old and was born and raised in the Bronx, New York. He is a graduate of Manhattanville College and lives locally with his wife. Officer Fernandez has been an NYPD police officer since January of 2016, assigned to the 52, 52nd Precinct and is a diehard Yankees fan. One of his assignments in the NYPD was as a neighborhood coordinator, where he helped to develop strategies to identify and address crimes and quality of life issues. In his free time, he enjoys spending time with his family and friends. Aye. Aye. To solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. To solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of New York. The Constitution of the State of New York. And the rules and regulations of the Village of America. And the rules and regulations of the Village of America. And I will faithfully discharge the duties of police officer. And I will faithfully discharge the duties of police officer. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my abilities. Congratulations. Kenneth 
ser heavies. Police officer Ted Hicks is 27 years old and was born and raised in Pleasantville, New York, and is currently living in Yonkers. He has one younger brother, and both his parents were teachers in the Mount Vernon School District for over 30 years. After graduating Pleasantville High School, Officer Pius Hippius attended Western Community College and earned an associate's degree in criminal justice. He then transferred to Marist College, where he received a bachelor's degree in criminal justice. After college, Hippius worked as a park ranger for Westchester County Department of Public Safety at Glen Island in New Rochelle for two summers. He was then hired by the Mount Vernon Police Department in July of 2019 and was most recently assigned to the Wellness Division. Police Officer Hippius is looking forward to making positive engagements with the community on a daily basis. Hi. Hi, Ted Hippius. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I'll support the Constitution. That I'll support the, the Constitution States. of the United States. Constitution of the State of New York. Constitution of the State of New York. The rules and regulations of the Village of America. The rules and regulations of the Village of America. And I will faithfully discharge the office of police officer. And I will faithfully discharge the office of police officer. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my ability. Officer Ivan Crespo Loja. Police officer Ivan Crespo Loja was born in Ecuador and moved to the United States at the age of eight. And as such, his first language is Spanish. He grew up in the village of Croton on Hudson and graduated from Croton Harmon High School in 2010. Officer Crespo Loja attended Westchester Community College and Pace University where he graduated with the Bachelor of Science in Criminal Justice. He started his law enforcement career with the NYPD in 2015. While assigned to the 44th Precinct in the Bronx, Officer Crespaloha worked for the Domestic Violence Unit, Vice Major Case, and the Human Trafficking Squad. He is a certified Spanish translator and has assisted in numerous investigations as a translator. He is dedicated to his career and takes great pride in being a police officer. During his time off, he enjoys spending time with family as well as outdoor activities like fishing and hiking. Hi. Hi, Ivan Craspaloha. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of New York. The Constitution of the State of New York. And the rules and regulations of the Village of America. And the rules and regulations of the Village of America. And I will faithfully discharge the offices of police officer. And I'll faithfully discharge the office of police officer. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities. Kimberly Schiaparelli. Probationary police officer Kimberly Schiaparelli is a third generation resident of the Maronick and couldn't be prouder to be part of the force and the community that has given her and her family so much. She graduated from Maronick High School and went on to further her education at Iowa College. Probationary police officer Schiaparelli likes to spend her free time baking, exercising, and spending time with family. She is excited to be part of the community in a whole new capacity and eager to serve and protect the village that she knows and loves. Hi, Kimberly Schiaparelli. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of New York. The Constitution of the State of New York. And the rules and regulations of the Village of America. And the rules and regulations of the Village of America. And that I will faithfully discharge the officer of the police officer. And I'll faithfully discharge the office, the uh, office of police officer. Of police officer. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. Well, this is a big night for Chaparelli family because dad's wearing long pants. Probationary <laughs> 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 police officer June Sanchez. Probationary <laughs> police officer June Sanchez is 23 years old and has been a resident of Maryland since he was 12 years old. He graduated from American High School in 2016 
and graduated from Westchester Community College with an associate's degree in criminal justice in 2019. In his free time, probationary police officer Sanchez enjoys spending time with his family and friends, traveling, trying new foods, riding his motorcycle, and going on hikes with his two dogs. He is excited to serve alongside Paul and the VMPD family and serve the community he has called home for over the past decade. I, June Sanchez. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. Constitution of the State of New York. Constitution of the State of New York. And the rules and regulations of the Village of America. And the rules and regulations of the Village of America. And that I will faithfully discharge the office of police officer. And I will faithfully discharge the office of the police officer. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. Thank you. Um, I just want to thank all of the men and women who got sworn in tonight. I want to thank the people standing against the wall here. I remember when a lot of them got sworn in. I remember when a lot of them got hired. And we have been blessed in this community by the quality of people that we have hired as police officers, not who remain here as police officers. And they put their lives on the line for us every day of the week. And they, they, they try hard to always be you know, personable, respectful and you know to de-escalate uh problems and they do an excellent job and we all owe them a lot let's give them all thank you thank you so many men and women that's for tonight for this work safe and hopefully 20 years from now you'll be standing up there watching other people this way You got to stay for the meeting. <laughs> they can't, Mike. <laughs> I'm wearing long pants. <laughs> Circle with them. Am I wrong? No. Dead or winter. All righty. <laughs> you want to keep the couple in case I go five and a half minutes? <laughs> uh, we can handle you. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Pardon me. We'll wait for What's the biggest crowd we've had? Two years. Two and a half years. Good night, everybody. Uh, you know, I didn't know how tall you were when I interviewed you. I didn't know how tall you were when we interviewed you. <laughs> All righty. That was the fun part of me. Uh, next up is communication to the board, round one. Part of the meeting. Can I go up? Yeah, after this gentleman, you're, you're next to Pat. No, no, you go first because he, he's always repeated. It's going to be five minutes. It's fine. Is it five? Just let me explain the ground rules here. <laughs> the limit for everybody is five minutes. You know, whether it's a frequent flyer or if it, even I, 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 my daughter has told me she's going to come and so, say something. I said, Well, you got five minutes, honey. <laughs> so if I could stand up to her, which is hard. Go ahead. I want to be five six Hill Street frequent flyer. Uh, number one, we had a uh, fireworks display last week, uh, and unfortunately, it wasn't well attended due to the fact that there was no banners anywhere in the village. I come to the board two weeks ago. I warned you that a lot of residents were unaware that we were going to have National Family Night Out. I called the police chief. I spoke to a lieutenant because she was away at a conference. They said, oh, don't worry. we got flyers and we're going to put the uh, trailer out. They put the trailer out. The only thing the trailer said was National Night Out, August 2nd, Farmer Island, 6 to 9. 
Nothing else. Nothing about fireworks. There were people confused. They thought it was a outing just for police officers' families with a fireworks display. They didn't know it was open to the public. I'm not going to dwell on it. In the future, if you're going to have such an event, you have to use the kiosks in the village in order to advertise it so every resident is aware. A couple of things that you spoke about in the work session, uh, the tree law. And again, this is why when, you, when you're when you gonna put something on the agenda, you shouldn't pass it that, that night because that's what you had it kind of indicated. There's a couple of adjustments that the tree law needs. If I have a tree that falls down, but it doesn't totally fall down, but it's as such that it's damaged enough that it's either gonna be a hazard or fall down in the future, what, there's got to be something in there that says that somebody can give a affidavit or a statement that says the tree's dangerous. We're going to take it down as we cut the other branches, or else you're going to be making somebody come back twice to remove the same tree. That happens quite fre frequently. You might lose half the tree. Now the tree is unbalanced. Now there's a problem with the trunk or something else. You know the tree's not going to last but the entire tree did not fall down. So there has to be something in there that says, hey, you know, an arbiter uh, uh, or, or somebody looked at the tree, here's the picture of the tree, here's a statement that says the tree wasn't gonna make it anyway, so the tree can be removed one, at one time, not have to go back for two. Having the village manager Going and, and doing trees is just a waste of money. He's the highest paid employee you have in the village. That should be assigned either by him, building department. You should have somebody who is assigned to do that job. Having somebody, you know, it's 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 just a, a waste of money. You have the high, you've got so much on your plate. You really want your village manager going and, and checking. I know he's an arbitress, but that shouldn't be. Yeah, that, that shouldn't be the person who's out there inspecting trees. Uh, CC, BCC. Can't you just uh, cut the function of BCC on the internal? Because the, 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 the problem with the law is if somebody has ill will, all they have to do is take a, a photo on their phone and send it to anybody they want. And you would never know who BCC'd somebody, you know? Is, if there's a, is a capability of just taking the BCC off or as people don't, simply don't use BCC. But, you know, I don't want this turning into, well, we think you lost it the wrong way. We're gonna remove you from a committee or, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna punish you for, you know, I, I don't want people arbitrarily trying to figure out who should be CC to not. Simply say, please don't use BCC and leave it at that. Um, what is the water rates going to be looked at? That's normally looked at in June, July. Uh, we have another $774,000 that's going to be approved today. I don't see anything scheduled for the joint water works coming in to, you know, adjust the rates. So, thank you. Good night. Excellent. Mr. Gavis. Yeah. How are you, sir? I'm great, Joe Gavis, um, uh, owner of property 273 Halstead Avenue, uh, Dance Gavis Studios. So I gotta say, first of all, I really appreciate having this type of forum. A uh, person like me, I've been in the village now for 35 years, close to 35 years, <coughs> property owner for almost that long. Um, and um, I don't know where else to go regarding some issues with my property. So after going to the building department and the planning board, I've been not being able to reach anybody at the zoning board, 
I thought, well, I'll just come to you guys because um, I've been here before and I know you guys and you could maybe just advise me. So I'm looking for what the update is on the situation and the property and the river and the water and the 50 foot setback and where that happened. We spoke in February of 2020, COVID hit in March, and then my life, everybody's life was on hold for two years. So since then, I have talked to a few people who said move to the planning board, but then I heard there's a new board that was uh, created to take, I mentioned it in my note to you, um, that was created to take this issue. So two things, the, the, the 50 foot, from what my understanding is, and I'm happy to talk to people or go to meetings, it, it was an arbitrary number. I want to know how that was created scientifically, if there was a scientific formula to create 50 feet. If there isn't, obviously the 50 foot should be negotiable. If there's not a, a, something that uh, states exactly why that was the case. As you know or don't know, my building probably sits about 10 feet from the edge of the river. Uh, I have been through, and you know, everybody knows living in the Maranek is, is torturous when it comes to water. Um, I've lived through three floods there, and each of the three floods have been taller than me um, inside the property. So I know what it's like to get flooded. But see, after just another issue is after talking to people, I, I don't want my property to just sit there till I die or until somebody takes it over and dumps it. I, I think it should it should be updated and beautified and changed and you it's it's completely visible from the train station. Thousands of people walk past my front yard every day. I I I, I just want to know what the status of the update is on the future of my property, so that I know how to approach a broker or somebody to say this is what you need to do with my property in order to move forward. I don't know what that is. Right. And, and you're right. Uh, it, it, there, there is not clarity at this point. At this point, uh, because of the way uh, a law that we changed a few years ago was written, uh, they, they disallow anything in a 50 foot setback, right? Uh, so actually what that does is it doesn't allow us to make that a better property because you know we, we if, if if you did some of your property you can go to planning board and they can say you know what now we're going to move it back 15 feet you know what i mean so yeah. it, it it's keeping it, it, it this is something that we have to we almost i thought came to a choice of having the planning board have discretion about this issue but it's kind of that was my off. understanding at the time. Greg Cutler used to work with them, and yes. he was uh, really helpful in explaining the situation and how it could be negotiated if it went to the zoning board. So the zoning board took over on right. this jurisdiction of the 50-foot setback. But then, and I can understand that if, a, let's just say an, an EPA person comes in and says, okay, I understand the 50-foot, we're going to do 25 feet, and we're going to do this, 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 and this, to make sure that everybody is happy. That's a way of, of, of yes. bringing the property up to date and that water's not gonna go away. So, so we something should be done. I, I shouldn't be flooded again. The whole property has to be lifted out of the floodplain. Yes. I, I make it a parking lot. We, we, I think we need to revisit that issue uh, and come to some sort of conclusion because we had been going back and forth about whether it's going to be the zoning board or the planning board. Also, oh, it hasn't been decided. It has not been decided. I'm sorry about that. Um, uh, but uh, And what was this other board that I, I wrote about? Is, it, is that the flood mitigation? It has, I don't even know the name of it. H-C-C-M-C. Yeah, it was four letters. H no, it was, it was a F-M-A-C, flood mitigation. No, it had a K in it or something, I think. Okay. There was a, my, I had a man who came in and said, you know what, we can make this beautiful property and let me look into it. He went, talked to somebody in the village and they said, that I'm, this is just hearsay, but they said, sir, keep away from that property because there's more problems than there are at anything else. So that, that potential person literally ran away, never heard from them after that. 
because of something that happened here yeah. in the village. What, what you referred to in the email is AKRF. There it is. What is that? And is that... They, no, they're, they're a consultant that works for the village. Oh, okay. Uh, so uh, we... and, and somebody who worked for that, I guess, consultant probably mentioned it to the broker. Okay. Or the buyer. He knew a friend or something. From like AKRF. That. And I, I, I mean, that's what really inspired me to come here was I thought, oh, no, you know, I mean, I, 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 my property, which is beautiful, it's the location is. I think that this is an issue that we have to address in the next year, and I'm, I'm very sorry we haven't come to a. So how does it? How do we move forward? The board of trustees. I can do anything. No, the board of trustees has to make a decision about which board will be the determinant board of whether a variance can be given on properties like that. And then who made up the fifty? That's, I'd love to know that. So Greg mentioned to me, honestly, I know he's not here anymore, but he said that was an arbitrary number. And that's what I'd like to know why. If it's arbitrary, it should be negotiated. Yeah, well, that's something that we can address. But I, I don't, I, I didn't make up the number, but I don't, I don't remember where it came from. Okay. But uh, it got into the wall. 50 feet takes away half my property. Half your property. And, and, and what can you do with it besides let it rot? I mean, you can't, you know, you gotta do that, something. That doesn't benefit anyone. I know that there's some properties that have been beautified and they're absolutely what? beautiful over there. I mentioned in my letter. Uh, Mr. Gavis, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm over five minutes. You're over five minutes. Okay. I'm sorry about that. But no, I, I'm sorry so about what happened. Do you come to the next one? No, let, I, will, I will answer your email and we'll talk about it. Okay. And, and then when, it, when it's appropriate. To come then. Yeah, yeah. Because okay. I don't want to have you keep going back and forth no, until there's real progress. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Joe. Nice. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Maybe next time. Thank you. Uh, public hearing on proposed law H of 2022, a proposed local law regarding use of video conferencing to conduct meetings in the village of Mara. Okay, I need a motion to open the public hearing. Second. All in favor, Augie, please. Trustees Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Tafur? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Uh, okay. So I was looking over this last night before it turned in, and I had asked that the word temporary be inserted in front of work related responsibilities, and that did not make it into the final cut. Uh, that that because to me. Work-related responsibilities, you know, that, that's open. I mean, what, what's to stop somebody from getting elected and taking a job in another state and just zo zooming in every meeting? Is, do we do we want that? I mean, I, I would say temporary would be fine with me. And I thought that that I thought we had agreed on that. Temporary seems reasonable. I think it's reasonable. The only question with temporary is, what does temporary really mean? Is it a day, an hour, a week, a year? It's obviously not an hour, but you know it, it's discretionary. Yeah, you know, I mean it, it's you know you. And so, it, and so it's language the way it is, uh -huh. because the way it is allows allows for someone to get elected and spend two years in Aruba. Do you think that's right? Do you? I don't believe that that's what it does. I mean, if the person is exercising their activities and uh, you know responsibilities and doing whatever needs to be done. So you think you could be a trustee and not uh, and work outside the community full time, and and and, and live outside the community full time? You can say live outside the community because that that's what I'm talking about. Didn't say didn't say live outside the community for a time. Why, why it, it, else? It, it, why I, else I, would you be against temporary? Because I don't know what temporary means. It can temporary. Temporary means it, not it, permanent. Let me finish. Temporary could be considered to be an hour, a day, a week. Right. I you know I work you know I have a consulting firm. I travel. 
know, it's what you know as part of my as part of my job as a permanent I approach. That. And and that's fine. If, if if you're a couple of times a year you're you're out of the country and you zoom in, that's fine. That's temporary. You know, I think this is the model law. I think it's, I think I'm, I am a world-class worrier. I hadn't worried about that temporary phrase. And I, I just, I, I think it's, I don't think it's, I don't think it's realistic. I don't think somebody's gonna be taking a job outside of the village and moving away for two years. If that's the case then that person, then it's not temporary. So, um, you know, if somebody takes a job that's, yeah, you're right. It's here. not temporary, right, but, but the law allows it. I, I just don't think I, I, I the think the law as currently written allows it. It's just we're we've essentially adopt we're essentially adopting the draft law that a lot of other communities are adopting. And I think it's I think it's fine. I don't think we should hold it up. I think we should adopt this. I don't law. think we should hold it up either. I don't think temporary is a, a major change that we're holding. Well, we won't we have to re-notice it and we won't hold the public hearing to, until September. Well, so do you think do you think that would the word temporary? Substantive change? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. Right. Well, I think it's better. I, I, I think I think it's it's a better law. Well, I'm not. I don't think we should. Win, right, me, hold, I don't. Me, that's me, what I'm going to say. Let me finish, please. I'm sorry. I don't think we should hold up this law for another month. If you want to adopt a law subsequently, we can do this whole thing over again. I think we should adopt the law. We're running out of time. The the governor's order extends just till Saturday. We don't know whether it'll be extended. You know. I think we it's prudent to have the option of being able to meet remotely if we need to. Okay. And so I, I, I don't think, to, I don't think, but for changing one word, it's prudent to not adopt this law. If you want to introduce another law, that's See, a different I, I, conversation. I, what bothers me is that I asked to have this word inserted. Nobody said anything. People agreed with it. Now it's not in and now it's not prudent. So you know, if, if, if one of you wanted to change, um, let me finish more arms because I'm still talking now. If one of you wanted to change and we had agreed to it and it wasn't in the law, I know darn well we'd be re-noticing it. It wasn't in the law when we, when it wasn't in the I law. I asked for it. You could check the meeting minutes. Well, but did you not check to see if it was in the law when it not came out? Not until last night, no. Okay, well. Uh, um, That's why you have public hearings though. Yeah, uh, and uh, there must be some upward limit on how, how long you can remote it. Uh, there should be a number. There. I mean, after uh, where where we review it after six times, eight times in a row. I mean, uh, that that would it, it just seems like it's too open ended. Like it, it's just like a, uh, it's a blank check. Well, what's your remedy going to be if somebody remotes in six times? Tell them they uh, can't attend the meeting uh, remotely anymore. Either show up or don't. I don't. I don't. <laughs> Uh, is, that's I mean, the way it was a, before we had remote meetings. I think, I think showing up is, 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 is kind of vital. If it, you know, if an elected official doesn't show up for meetings, the remedy is to file, is to have an individual file a lawsuit to remove them from office. So it's not, you know, it's maybe different with appointed officers because we have an attendance rule. I, I, you know, I think we were late to the party with this law. We should have been dealing with it in March. We didn't. Um, I think we should adopt the law if you want to adopt a new law that has temporary put that on for september but i i wouldn't i don't think we should put ourselves in situations where well, if I'm someone gonna, if someone gonna, i'm not going to propose a new law in september because you guys aren't going to support it so just wait until december i'm not going to waste my time if you want to adopt this law adopt the law yeah i think we should adopt the law i think we should i think we should make sure that there's an ability to me remotely. I mean, there's, you know, I mean, I don't know about you, but I know so many people who have COVID and I think we want to be able to be flexible enough to make sure we can keep meeting and not have a situation where there isn't a quorum. Anybody else? I, I, I think we're just a little bit too in love with this remote video conference. All right. Well, anybody from the audience? I only have one audience. Well, two. Do you count? All right, I'll send a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. Full roll. Trustee is young. This is to close the hearing. Yes. Close yes. the hearing. Yes. Trustee Natchez. Yes. 
Trustee Lucas? Yes. Trustee Tafour? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Yes. Um, move approval on the uh, move to adopt of the of the uh, roll. Second. What we call roll. Trustee Young. No. Trustee Natchez. Yes. Trustee Lucas. Yes. Trustee Tafour. Yes. Mayor Murphy. No. Okay. All right. Uh, next item on the agenda. Uh, what are the bills? No. Will Street. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. What are the bills? Uh, resolution authorizing budget amendment for additional funding for Willow's Willow Street sinkhole repair. Uh, so this is five thousand one hundred twenty-nine thousand from contingent to street maintenance uh, contract services. Uh, Dan, I guess they, they hit a, uh, a little difficulty when they dug in. Yeah, there was just an additional uh, half a day of work plus additional blacktop, which uh, caused some uh, prices to over what was originally anticipated. Okay, thank you, Dan. I uh, need a motion. So moved. Second. Ogie, please, sir. Trustee is young. Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Tafur? Yes. Mayor yes. Murphy? Aye. Uh, resolution authorizing budget amendment for emergency repair to storm drain. Uh, this is an emergency repair that was on, oh geez, what street is it here? Colonial, Colonial Court. Uh, that had been a problem, I know, going back a couple of years and uh, the village uh, figured out the difficulty with the input I know of a couple of residents over there. Uh, so anybody have any questions or concerns? I'll make the motion. Second. Wogi, please, sir. Trustee. He's young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Okay. Uh, the next is resolution authorizing budget amendment to fund police department contract services line. Uh, this is actually, this is a grant that we are accepting uh, through revenue state aid, and we are putting it into the police contract service line. And what this grant does, uh, hopefully uh, it'll help our offices uh, deal with the stressful jobs that they do day in and day out. Uh, it, it, it is to, you know, to avail themselves of any counseling that they might need or any difficulty that uh, workplace stress or trauma uh, that I'm sure that they uh deal with at a frequent level. And uh, hopefully uh, when they have those situations, they will feel uh, free to avail themselves of this opportunity because you know everybody needs to talk about something every once in a while. And uh, you know, I think it, it's a great grant to receive and I hope the men and women uh, use it and benefit from it. So I would definitely make this motion. Second. Any questions or concerns? Wogi, please call the roll. Trustees Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Tafour? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, manual abstract of vouchers, $22,315.03. Uh, does anybody have any questions or concerns about the manual vouchers? I, just, I had a question and I asked Augie um, about it today and it was the, the second to last page um and it's the it's the i guess it's out at colonial court for barry Moore. Right. It says it's it's but it's it's like a you know almost two hundred thousand dollars for emergency repair and it was just the same kind of the question if it's if we could be if we could be um or no just it's on a manual on a regular budget oh, so, oh i'm sorry you know it's the regular so i'm ahead of myself I need a motion to approve the manual. So move. Second. Will you call the roll? Trustees Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Tafour? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, the next up is the abstract of audited vouchers, and it's $1,049,161.72. Mayor Murphy? Anybody have any questions or concerns? 
Let me just get the page. I know, you want to talk a little bit about what we just talked about? Yeah, it's page. Why is it? It's uh, 40, 44. 46. And um, it, I just, I think it's, you know, we keep doing these emergency repairs and obviously there are emergencies and we have to do it. And it's something that was negotiated so that we don't have to do them all at once. We can do the, we can repair the these portions of these asbestos pipes as there's a problem with them. But it, it just occurred to me, and Tom said you, would, you said you would do this, that it might be prudent to see if we could um, have, have the waterworks work out a repair schedule where it's not on an emergency basis. And you know, hopefully we hit some of these before they become emergencies, but save a little money in doing so. I'll discuss that with you. Because it's 100, I, you know what, this is very hard to read. It's. I'd also like to find out how much of this we have left. Amazing yeah, well, that, that pipes out of asbestos. It's it's a million forty nine thousand dollars. So it's you know it's a big chunk of money for this one repair. Which repair? Well, I know is this is this the same thing? It's it's the it's the colonial court drainage. So is that yeah. not the pipes? So no, that's different... not Westchester General Waterworks. Okay, okay. That's the village. Uh, oh, yeah, it's the village stormwater storm drainage. Storm and, and these are not asbestos pipes, so they are. Yeah, but then no, because it's all it's all yeah, our, them. Our pipes are usually vitrified clay or cast iron. Yeah. But this was an emergency that repair that we approved. Right, but I don't do it the was just the drill water works. Well, that's not going to help. Okay. All right. Any a motion on the one million? So moved. Second. Or please. Trustees Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. To four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. I'll please hand this down to my friend down there. Sure. A dog park update on the old business to be held. Uh, you know, I know the CZM is meeting again in uh, a, week. a week. Now, at the end of the day, this is a fence. So, you know, I, I would hope that they would be done with this and we can move on this in September. Uh, Dan, the village has given them what we have. The village provided the EAF uh, forceful assessment form uh, that was uh, assembled with the help of uh, myself, our planner, Trustee Lucas, uh, explaining the project, uh, why we believed it to be consistent with the mm -hmm. LWRP. Uh, that's what was provided to them. And, and we also provided, uh, Trustee Lucas provided some meeting minutes yeah. uh, that uh, demonstrated why the Harbor Island site was selected for a location. Okay. So they have asked for some additional information. They would say if we want them to approve it next week, we should answer the questions. Like what? What are they asking for? They wanted um, information about what the fence looked like and more of a plan. So they had, they had mostly what the fence looked like. There were some. Wow. I said, you know, um, air on, 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 the, on their mission, what it looks like. Well, I don't know if you, uh, you, you can watch the meeting, you can look at it. The, uh, the, I think the point that should be made here is we're late to the party. This should have been sent to them earlier on in our process. And so I think we need to be very mindful of how we shepherd land use, any kind of land use project through um, boards and commissions. We expect applicants to go through the steps and um, we have an uh, we have to get a, an advisory consistency determination from HCZM or prepare one ourselves. So I think we were late in, in, in submitting these documents to HCZM. And instead of complaining about them taking time, I think we should think about the fact that we need to get our ducks in order and do our applications in a, in a timely manner. Common sense though. I mean, it, it, it's just, uh, I think you're getting a, um, a red tape by our own advisory board. Our, we did not send this to them in a timely fashion and they're holding an extra meeting to expedite the review. The word we're looking for is thank you. Uh, well, I think if they don't work, if they don't pass it in the next meeting, I think we take it back ourselves and just can, can we can we give them a drawing of where it is and a picture of the fencing that we're using? Yes. And if they don't pass it, then we will we'll take action in September. 
because uh, it is a fence. Go ahead. I think you're being a little unfair to the board because I watched that meeting. Okay. Uh, they gave a, a specific punch list at the end of we'd like these things. And they said, we want to extradite this. We want to get this done. It's important to the village. That was their opinion right there. But there's a question. There was a question about uh, uh, cleanup, uh, fetal matter, Things like that. They just wanted to, 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 to yeah. They yeah, just, just wanted to dot the i's and cross the t's, but it wasn't a tough uh, punch list. And if you watch the meeting, you know there's no reason it can't be supplied. And they they want to expedite it. They yeah. they specifically said this will be on the top of our agenda. and We want to get it done. Thank you. All right, we'll expect it back next week. Then. Next meeting. Okay, new business. Uh, the C mom is being held. Yes, uh, we're still reviewing comments with Save the Sound. Uh, we should have our comments back to their comments by the end of this week. So Save the Sound. We've been working on it. We're plugging away. Okay, thank you. All right. So we got a bunch of stuff here from the traffic board. Uh, let's make it this my ducks in a row here. Right, the first up. North Barry and Brook Street. Uh, this is a stop sign at the intersection of North, on North Barry at the intersection of Brook going both ways, north and south on North Barry. <coughs> Any questions or concerns? Well, I raised this in work session. Um, I know that historically there were stop signs there. Uh, the village went through the uh, process of creating them. There was a lawsuit and the village was forced to take them out. Uh, it was some time ago. I don't have the case. It's something that I think the village should look into and make sure that we dot our I's and cross our T's before we do it. I have no problems with the stop signs. I just want to make sure we're not doing anything that's illegal. And I know Bob is trying to find it, but you know, in, uh, Bob, what did you find? We have some leads. Maybe you have found it. I don't know. So just to, to update you, while you were going on with the work session, I looked through Westlaw for reported cases, and I couldn't find anything. Now, not a lot of cases at the level of Supreme Court, the first major trial court, are reported. So it's entirely possible there's another decision, which we're either going to have to find through the village archives, or what would be a, a almost impossible task of finding in the county clerk's office. Bob, in your experience as both a, you know, an appellate judge and as a, a, a village attorney and a town attorney, is, are we within our rights to put stop signs on the street? Uh, as, as Dan said at the work session, it's ordinarily local responsibility. I don't know what the argument would be for uh, uh, setting aside a decision to uh, establish a stop sign other than maybe some procedural objection. Dan, is there a downside to this? I mean, is there a... Oh, I, mean, is there I think there are a couple of leads that the village could try and find out, and I have no problems doing it. We could actually do it in the next meeting if we can find the answer. Uh, but I would prefer not to move on this until we can exhaust it looking for it. And I know that we, up until tonight, nobody is, it's not been brought forward. No one's ever heard this until tonight. Well, I mean, did yeah, you mention I, at the work I, session so, when they talked about it? I mean, it, 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 originally? This is the first time it's come to the board. Yeah. I mean, um, I, I, so. you remember, but perhaps, perhaps you, are you sure you remember correctly or? Yes, there was stop signs there. There was a court case and the stop signs came out. I do not know what, I don't know anything about it because I had nothing to do with it. Oh, okay. All right, so. Well, I guess the, the, the question was, is there a downside? I mean, is, is there a, a, a yeah. reason anyone would not want stop signs there? Uh, I, 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 I talked, I discussed the warrants for when you establish hallway yeah. stop sign. I don't know if it necessarily these those warrants, but uh, you know, that's, that's about it. But uh, I think it's, I, I think it's within your legislative prerogative. Yeah, so. Uh, the second part is, you know, the I believe the goal is to have this done in time for the beginning of the school oh, yeah. year. Mm -hmm. uh, if this gets delayed, uh, one of the things that we have to do before we install any signs is call for utility mark out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's going to add several days to our ability to actually be in a position to install a sign. So right. if there if there's a desire to get done by the school year starting, gotcha. well, thank you, Dave. We, we could 
call for that now and still do an investigation, you know, in search, and then it, in two weeks we pass it one way or the other. Oh, but we we're but we're not having that kind of a meeting in two weeks. Okay, I, I'll make a motion that we approve this st stop signs. Second. Or we call roll. Trustee He's Young. Yes. Trustee Natchez. No. Trustee Lucas. Yeah, I I do think it, it, we should probably try to to see if, if there's yeah. see what this lawsuit is what this decision was, but I think we should do it because I think it, I think the, the the big I think the people who don't want to have these stop signs are people who like to drive rapidly through that intersection. Yep. Trustee Tafur. Yes. Mayor Murphy. Aye. Uh, next from the traffic is Carpenter Place. Uh, the north side of Carpenter Place currently, there is no parking from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Carpenter Place intersects with the high school uh, where the Palmer Gym is. Uh, so now it's going to be changed from 7.30 a.m. to 3.30 a.m., still eight hours, but uh, just uh, Monday through Friday on school days. No parking on the north side of Carpenter, which is not a change to the parking, it's just changed to the hours. And as I disclosed in work session, uh, there are people who are near and dear to me who live on the south side of Carpenter, but I don't think that stops me from voting on this. Do right. I want to make a motion? I move to approve. Second. Augustino. Trustees, Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Defour? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, Monsignor Goodwine. Uh, this is another uh, parking prohibited. Uh, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. on school days and 2 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. on school days on the east side of Monsignor Goodwine from a point 25 feet north of the intersection with New Street to a point 20 feet south of the intersection with Elliott. And this is uh, for drop, drop off and pick up at the French American School, which uh, now uses uh, the, uh, the uh, former Catholic School uh, on Monsignor, St. Vito's Catholic School. Any questions or concerns? Need a motion? So moved. Second. All you please. Trustees Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Tafur? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, Ralph Avenue Extension, uh, north from Elliott to Gertrude. Uh, rescind that and add Ralph Avenue Extension north from New Street to Gertrude. One, making that a one way street from New Street to Ger Gertrude on Ralph Avenue Extension. This is in Harbor Heights? No, this is in uh, Washingtonville. Well, this okay. this, this okay. is no. also around uh, the school. Got it, got it. Yeah, the no, Maranek no, Avenue. No. Okay. So this is like it's related to this. This is got related it. to the school. Yeah, it's, it's related to the school uh, drop off and pick up activity. Okay, uh, I'll make that motion. Second, Augustino. Trustees, Young. Yes. Natchez. Lucas. Yes. Four. Yes. Mayor Murphy. Uh, Res Hillside Avenue bridge of Mamaronic Avenue River replacement of a Mamaronic River replacement. No avenue, I'm sorry. Resolution authorizing additional funding for construction, inspection, construction, administrative service uh, for Hillside Avenue bridge of Mamaronic Avenue. This is going to be held, right? Yeah, and it will receive the proposal Friday afternoon. So. Okay. Now the rest are, we have, I have to add stuff at the end. Okay, so. Remind me at the end that I have to add stuff. Stop. To be held. Uh, resolution authorizing execution of intermunicipal agreement for Rye Lake filtration plant uh, grant application with Westchester Joint Waterworks. Uh, the Westchester Joint Waterworks cannot apply for grants on its own without the agreement of the three municipalities. They're applying for a grant of $30 million uh, for the, the build, building of a filtration plant, which is mandated uh, that we do. Uh, if they get this grant, which I'm, I'm hopeful about, uh, it'll save the village of Mamaroneck ratepayers 
uh, I think $8.3 million. So this is not an insignificant uh, amount of money. So keep your fingers crossed. Glenn? Uh, I think additionally, uh, they're looking to get a, a, a tax-free loan or an interest-free loan. Is that true? I thought I read that too. Yes. Which another significant savings. Yeah. And I think this is uh, through the hard work of our friend, uh, Steve Otis. Any questions or concerns? I need a motion. Second. Roll roll. Trustees Young? Yes. Trustee Natchez? Yes. Trustee Lucas? Yes. Trustee Tafour? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, the next is 4E, uh, appointment of Village of Mimarnock representative to the Regatta Condominium Board, uh, Village of Mimarnock, has a permanent seat uh, at the Regatta Condominium Board because we have the commercial property down in the bottom. I guess that was in the uh, original uh, prospectus. Uh, our friend, Mr. Fusco did it for many years and uh, we relieved him of that responsibility. Uh, Jason Pinto did. And that, now Jason Pinto has done it for a few years and uh, Jason uh, has a lot of responsibilities that he's uh, dealing with. And if you've ever been on a co-op or a condo board, uh, you realize that it's, uh, it's a whole different world. Uh, so uh, our village manager, uh, Jerry Barbario is going to uh, step in there. Uh, and I think because there are significant issues that we've had uh, with the board, uh, I think it's uh, a good move to have a village official uh, with gravitas, not that Augie doesn't have gravitas, Augie exudes gravitas, right? but a little more higher title. And Augie's done his time. And they, and they asked for Augie, but they, Augie's they not interested. Augie. Yes. I, thank you. I think the manager <laughs> his leadership in this role will really benefit the whole community. Thank you. <laughs> Well spoken. <laughs> okay. Uh, that was a very graceful way of saying I'm not doing it. Uh, so, any questions or concerns? I just, you know, I think we needed somebody there. We need somebody in a high position, but I, with all the responsibilities that the manager has and all the things that are going on, I think not the best use of his time. Okay. I make a motion to approve the resolution appointing the village manager to the Regatta Condominium Board. Second. All in call roll. Trustee Young? Yes. Trustee Natchez? Yes. Trustee Lucas? Yes. Trustee Tafour? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, resolution authorizing draft policy on acceptance of gifts to the village of Mamara. Mayor Ray. Uh, some in substance, uh, this allows the village manager or the village staff to accept any gift under $100 to the village. This isn't for personal gifts. And if it's a gift of over $100, the village board has to approve it. Questions or concerns? Right now, if somebody wants to make a donation to the village, it has to come to the village board. Mm -hmm. Correct. And I think that's a great policy. I think that's a, a, Something that we should continue. Okay, this this will only. I understand. Well, I'm just explaining to the folks at home that this will only affect gifts of under a hundred dollars. Like if somebody uh, over a hundred dollars will still go to the village board. Under a hundred dollars, like if the Girl Scouts give uh, the Marine Education Center twenty five dollars, we don't have to vote to approve it anymore. That's correct. Um, but the procedure. Is to, and now the donors can consult with the mayor, the board, or the or the manager. I don't think that we should encourage people to consult with the mayor and board. I think it should just be directly with the manager. I think that was, I think that's something we talked about last time. But. I mean, that means all five of us can say yes, and then it has to go to the manager. Like, if you, I mean, you know, if people ask us a question, I think we just refer it to the manager. That's fine. 
I think, you know, can we just say prospective donors are- Yeah, this isn't a law, so you're being we're changing. We're not encouraging people to consult informally, just, or- Yes, but, you know, I, I guarantee people are gonna call me, not to say quarter million. No, just for the procedure. I mean, I, you know, I don't, I don't think that we want to encourage residents to get in touch with the mayor and board about making donations. I think that's like so a you slippery sort you're, of- You're suggesting dropping it at uh, point three? For the resolution? Yes, she yeah. is. Okay, let's strike out. Because we can't engage in any fundraising activity for such purpose. Okay. You know, like so, really they should, they need to talk to Augie about what the rules are. <laughs> so, All right. so you're dropping point three from both, this, just so I'm clear. Just point three, the, yeah. From this, uh, there, from the, um, yes. All right. There's some good places in that. No, it was just in the one place. All right, I need a motion. So moved. Second. You're talking about as amended, correct? As, as amended, it. yes. Call roll. Trustee is young. Yes. Natchez. No. Lucas. Yes. Four. Yes. Mayor Murphy. Yes. Okay. The next one is being held. Uh, resolution authorizing budget amendment to fund overtime lines. I have a question. Is this, this has already been done? The overtime's already been incurred? Uh, some overtime has been incurred, but some of it's also we're looking to. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Some has already been incurred, but we're also looking to fund it to anticipate overtime for the remainder of the fiscal year. This is the rivers? I, I'm lost. No, that's not, no, that's not clear then. That's not what this says, number one. And number two, I don't understand why we need over we needed overtime for doing this. That's what it, that's what bothers me. It's $164. Is that the amount? Or $164? It's $164, correct? For the overtime? Yeah, I mean part of it was to complete the striping. At Fort Worth Park. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand. So that was, we, we, we weren't, we're not going to stop the strike being before. Doing right. That. And the second part was for the Marie Education Center because uh, we have not yet hired the assistant naturalist. The village naturalist uh, Kyle is, is working We're additional hours. hours. Uh, so we need to fund that through uh, the, the remainder of the summer. Okay. So the total. So we, we did a budget, just a minute. We did a budget. We knew what we were doing with the budget. Now we're saying that that wasn't enough. Is that what you're saying? To, to yes. perform the strike. That it, was, it was an unanticipated expense. When we, no, but when uh, for the Marine Education together. Center, though, is what I'm saying. And we were, and that was a slow it was not anticipated because we had the position of assistant naturalist in the, in the budget, which we have not yet hired. So Kyle has had to work additional hours. And she's being compensated for a time. Yeah, we were originally looking to have yeah. the additional work funded by a. Uh, a I was I was position. down yeah I was down in a park the other day and I was talking to her and she said she had been in like twenty eight days in a row or something. Right. But I guess the I mean just I mean the, if this is fine but would it have been logical to take the money from her sal from the salary line of the person we didn't hire. I mean, it's not. I know it's just moving things around, but but, but that. I mean, it, oh. it's just fine. I'm just saying. No, it's, I, it's fine. It's a point. Okay. In the end, that money goes into the the, the fund balance if it's not spent. Right. So sure. it, it 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 recharges itself. I'm making a motion. Second. Augie Cole. Trustee Young? Yes. Trustee Natchez? Yes. Trustee Lucas? Yes. Trustee Tafour? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, Harbor Island Park Roadway Resurfing. Resolution authorizing ad additional funding for resurfacing for Harbor Island Park Roadways. Uh, Dan, you want to give us a little quick? Uh, there are we're just some additional funds. Uh, one, the first because of the uh, utility markout we had to call for, for the private, even though it's public property, it's not on a public street, so it's considered a private utility markout. Uh, so we did the payment correctly. 
Uh, plus, there was uh, an error in the original resolution. Uh, it was short by that fourteen hundred dollars. So uh, we're asking to correct that uh, under uh, estimation of the original resolution in this resolution. So it's two items: the markout and then the readjustment based on the uh, error in the prior resolution. Okay. So. The change order is for about fourteen hundred dollars, and the eighteen hundred is the additional day in cost. Yes, it's thirty two hundred dollars, fourteen hundred for the paving, eighteen hundred for the utility markdown. But we're going up one hundred and seventeen thousand. That's one hundred seventeen from the original uh, approval, which was four ninety two. And we approved on uh, June twenty seventh. Yeah. A change order to the project in the amount of 117. So, so the change order is, I mean, but the change order is more than just those two items. It's it's correct. Yeah, and, and the the first resolve clause says increase by 3282 old So it, it, I think what's confusing is the third whereas makes it seem like we like we're kind of starting all over. The yeah, second so it whereas sort of seems like fourteen hundred dollars and eighteen hundred dollars and three thousand two hundred dollars adds up to one hundred and seventeen thousand dollars, which it doesn't. Like there's three sort of modest. I mean, when you look at it carefully, he's got it right. It just it it's just as they said, the math works out, but it's just it's, and I'm surprised that you did. It's inartfully worded. Uh, I, I, sometimes I, I try to live up to the. Uh, the pros and that's the right. of your you, proclamations. You know, you, you hit ninety. You, you're hitting nine hundred, so I really shouldn't be. <laughs> All right, I'll make that motion. Second, Augie. Trustee Young. Yes. Trustee Natchez. Yes. Yeah. Trustee Lucas. Yes. Yeah. Trustee Tafor. Yes. Mayor Murphy. Yes. Uh, resolution authorizing Westchester Joint Waterworks Projects. All right, there are three projects here, so let me just blast for them. We talked about these in work session. Uh, accepting Westchester Joint Waterworks Project replacement of 400 lineal feet of damaged or leaking transite water main on Claflin Avenue. Uh, and this will cost us $450. $450,000, I'm sorry. <laughs> if only. Yeah, if only. Yeah. Uh, and I explained to Trustee Young, and I'll explain to the community, transite pipe is a pipe that, for some reason, they made with asbestos. I guess they just had so much asbestos, they were putting it in everything. So that when there's a break, like if there's a break in a normal pipe, you cut out, let's just say, a 10-foot portion, and you, you join it together, and you're done. But in a transite pipe, because the Westchester General Waterworks made a deal with the uh, Department of Health to remove the transite, but the Department of Health, under that agreement, has said, you know, you got to remove from the beginning of the transite to the end of the transite. So, so with, while this might be a two foot break, we're replacing 400 linear feet. And it, it, it all works to the good, but it's just, you know, it's expensive to do. Uh, okay, I need a motion on this. So moved. Second. Orgy. Trustees Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Tafur? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. All right. Uh, where is the Village of Mamaronic? This is a uh, authorization of Westchester Joint Waterworks local capital project for infrastructure replacement relating, relating to the planned paving in the Village of Mamaronic. Uh, this is the village of Maranek is doing all this paving as we do every year. And Westchester Joint Waterworks uh, uses that uh, as we rip up the street, they replace uh, some of their infrastructure so that we're not doing it twice. We're not ripping up the street twice, which had happened years ago. So it's actually a smart move to coordinate uh, changing our infrastructure. Which measure, you have to twice, cut once. measure twice, cut once. You're learning, you're learning, very good. Measure twice cut once. Uh, I need a motion. Second. Augustino. Trustees Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Tafur? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, resolution to accept the Westchester Joint Waterworks project. Uh, this is another 425 feet of damaged uh, 
Transite Water Main on Brevort Lane, which is in Rye and it's outside the Westchester Joint Waterworks District, but we supply water to that part of Rye. Uh, so how this works is, since it's outside the district, it's a joint project. That means all three communities pay for it, as opposed to Claflin, where the village pays for it because it just affects our residents. So all three communities pay for it. Uh, and then they get reimbursed through the water rates that we charge the folks in Rye. So that the folks in Rye don't get off scot-free, they have to pay for their infrastructure. But since they don't, it's not their pipe, it's our pipe, we foot the bill and get the money back off. So I don't want anybody to think that we're giving Mariah a free ride. Uh, so the village's share is $110,400. Yeah. Yeah. It's 124 too. Oh, I'm sorry, you're right. A revised share is 124 too. Can I ask a, a just sure. question? So how long does it take for us to get paid back? Do you know? It, it, I, it's usually over a few years. I don't know off the top of my head. I'll ask that again tomorrow night, but it's not immediate because it's through the water rates. Okay. I'll make that motion. Okay. Mr. Fosca? Trustees Young? Yes. Trustee Natchez? Yes. Trustee Lucas? Yes. Trustee Tafor? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, resolution authorizing purchase of a cub. Kabuda? Kabuda. Kabuda, RTV. Uh, our John Deere, uh, as I would call it, a, a, a large uh, golf cart uh, is coming to the end of its life. Uh, the, the head of the Parks Department, a very smart, enterprising young man, has decided that we'd be better served by getting this vehicle because it would do the functions of the John Deere, but also be able to, to haul more equipment and parts. Is that true? Correct. Okay. Uh, and we're ordering it now because it takes nine months to get it. In these days. Yeah. Okay. That being explained, anybody have questions, concerns? So moved. Second. Morgan, please. Trustees, Young? Yes. Natchez? Yeah. Lucas? Yes. To four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Okay, I have a bunch of stuff to add here, so please bear with me. In executive session, uh, we talked about filling some spots on uh, different boards and commissions, and we have three people who have volunteered, and tonight we are going to appoint those three people. So item 4L is to add an item to the agenda to appoint a person to the tree committee. I need a motion to add. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. The next motion is to appoint, and I'm making it, uh, Mr. Krishna. Okay, yeah. Krishna uh, Fickenberg. Fickenberg. And I'm sorry if I just mangled your name, Mr. Fickenberg. Uh, to the tree committee. He has a very impressive resume. Uh, he's already gone to meetings. He's actually taking a tree that I have raised in my apartment and he's going to find a home for it. Uh, so I, I appreciate that. So I will make the motion. Second. Augustino. Trustees Young? Yes. Matches? Yes. Lucas? Yes. To four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, and that was item 4M. This is item 4N to add an item to the agenda to appoint a member of the HCZMC. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, the gentleman uh, who uh, desires and we, we want to appoint to be on HCZMC is George Mutapas. Georgios. What? Georgios or George? It says George. Oh, okay, sorry. George Mutapas, mm -hmm. I believe. And if I, if I mispronounce that, please accept my apologies. Uh, I'll make that motion. I'll second. It's a term that expires December 2024. They both, there's two, and they both expire December 2024. Okay, good. Uh, 
Court ruled. Trustee is Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Tafur? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Okay, this is item O, to add an item to the agenda uh, to appoint a, a person to the Harbor Coast Zone Management Committee. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, uh, I make a motion to appoint uh, Ms. Shannon, uh, Sharon, Ms. Sharon Torres uh, to the Harbor Coastal Zone Management Committee. Torres. Uh, Torres, I said Torres. Ms. Torres uh, served on a PRRC and on a Coyote Committee before, and I was uh, the chair of the PRRC, and she was a very active, very intelligent, and very engaged member. And uh, I look forward to uh, watching her career flourish in service in the village of Mamaric. So I make that motion. Second. Augustino, please. Trustee. Is it Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Tafur? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Yes. Aye. And that's also December 2024. All right. And just so you know, the tree committee was also December 2024. Well, good. Okay. So Sally doesn't have to look that up. Communication to the board, round two. So, Mr. Mayor, I hope you did enjoy your vacation. I did. Were you back for the fireworks? Yeah. yeah they were spectacular. They, they really... They were. That, that company really does put on a nice show, I must say. A couple of things, I bring this up um, on a regular basis. Can we pass a law that will allow uh, raising the height, yeah, variance for people who want to raise their houses in the front side? Doesn't matter commercial, doesn't matter residential, multifamily. If anybody wants to move their house up to 15 feet, let them be able to get that, that height variance from the village. Um, you can put in a stipulation that Half of what is uh, underneath the house has to be a uh, pervious surface. So you have uh, better drainage. Uh, you can say that if they lower the house again, that or they try to enclose it, they lose the variance. And if they go outside what their current footprint is, then they have to go to the Board of Appeals. Not only, I mean, it might be expensive, but a lot of people are paying a lot of money uh, for uh, flood insurance. When you take in the flood insurance and risks, some of them are willing to do it. They go fund me however they want, but they have to be, they have to have that from this board before they can even attempt it. Um, you were talking about um, escrow for the building inspector. There's very few of those cases. And the one reason I don't like it is it causes um, discrimination within the village because there may be somebody who wants to challenge a decision by the building inspector, but can't afford it. So if all of a sudden you gotta pay those escrow costs, if you're a millionaire and you wanna challenge it, you can afford it, what about the rest of the village? This is what, you, what you're actually doing for very few cases is limiting probably about 80% of the village that if they find that they want to challenge the building inspector, that they can't afford to do it. Uh, same type of note, the uh, uh, a tree law, if I put in for a permit to uh, cut down a tree, I shouldn't have to go to the courts if they don't act on it. You might want to make it 30 days, and then you might want to turn around and say, if it's not acted on the 30 days, that you were to give notice to the village one more time, last notice, another 10 days. And at that point, if they don't act on it, then you're allowed to uh, cut down the trees. Finally, uh, I'm asking about the water. Specifically, you, saw, you, you see the numbers coming in. I think we should have a significant raise in the water rates to give um, Augie an option to pay some of these smaller projects without bonding them. That way, when you get that big, you know, the really big project that's gonna cost you 10 million or 5 million, whatever, is that we don't have to bond every single project with the water. We can raise the water rates a little bit extra now. So 
some of those bills could be paid off. You know, a 200,000 project, a 100,000 project could be paid off. And then when you have the really big projects, you, you could bond those. That way, that way it's more flexibility and you have a better option. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Report from the assistant village manager. I uh, just want to thank the Recreation Park Department for a successful camp program for 2022. Our first fully unrestricted camp since 2019. Are they done? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Summer first just flies by. Ah, oh, those poor kids. I know that feeling. I remember that feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Camping? Or having yeah, yeah, I, I, the end of day camp, and you know it's winding down, and you're trying to figure out how to get more fun into it and it's hot and your mother's sick of you. I'm sorry, I got just a flashback, a little <laughs> therapy <laughs> session here. <laughs> you okay, Tom? No, I'll be fine. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mom. <laughs> oh, um, you have to go buy your new notebook. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh, that was always so fun. I had to go, I had to go get the Catholic school uniform every year. Oh, oh that was oh that was oh you oh, notice oh. it's sun setting earlier and oh, then uh, yeah. it's just it's, right? it's oh. brutal. Brutal. <laughs> Re report <laughs> report a <laughs> little look into the mayor's psyche there. Uh report from the clerk treasurer. Nothing at this time, Mayor. Mr. Village Attorney. Nothing from anyone. All right, thank you, sir. Uh minutes of Board of Trustees work session, a regular meeting of July 25th, 2022. Minutes of the planning board meeting. These are minutes that are being reported. Minutes of the planning board meeting of July 13th, 2022. Minutes of the tree committee meeting of July 20th. June. Of, sorry, thank you. Of June 23rd, 2022. It's uh, so like, like I said, summer is uh, waning. And uh, stop it. I hope, no, I'm, I'm talking to the people. <laughs> and, and I hope everybody cramps as much fun as they can and enjoy your vacations and please be safe. We have a, a truncated meeting at the end of the month, and we'll be back uh, in September after Labor Day, September 12th. But I hope everybody has a great Labor Day and uh, enjoy the rest of the summer. We need a motion to concert? What? Yeah. We have one more we concert from the Emma. Yeah. Uh, I don't know the date on it, 17th. but I. The 17th. Thank 17th, you. 17th. Well, the first concert was fantastic. The uh, Broadway show turns. That was fantastic. This what what I meant, what I meant, Mayor, was that there's still plenty of summer left. Don't be so gloomy. <laughs> I know. So, come on. I, know. I just still got, my, I got myself into the guardian angel thing, and I see, the, <laughs> see Sister Margaret the, looming over me. Look at the bright side. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I need a motion to adjourn this meeting. So Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Have a good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.